Yo, what's good, y'all? Welcome this week's episode of Talks with Taboo. Welcome this week's episode of the podcast. Hope y'all having a great week, and I appreciate y'all being here, man. We got a fantastic guest for you today. One of my favorite episodes to do, period. Uh, before I introduce this guest, just got to go ahead and tell y'all, tickets for my upcoming tour, Daisy Dukes and Cowboy Boots, are out now. Uh, it's my bus album headline tour. I got one hell of a lineup. We got... S- we got uh, Import, Smith, Slump, and we're going all over the fucking place, man. We're bringing the most fun tour in dance music everywhere this fall. So um, you can get those tickets at taboomusic.com. Uh, we're hitting the road in one month, and I can tell y'all, man, I've been working nonstop to make this sh- um, tour and show the best thing it could possibly be. So I promise you guys it's going to be a great-ass time, and I can't wait to be about out on the road. Um, and hell yeah, man, really looking forward to it. But my guest this week has been in this industry for a very long time, doing it at a very high level, uh, working with some of the best artists out there and making some of the best music. Um, you know, me and this guy, we've only chatted here and there in passing and just very short conversations. This has been one of the longest podcasts I've done uh, in four years of doing this show. And man, it was so much fucking fun just sitting here, hearing his story, talking shit, just having fun conversations, uh, you know, and I really got to know this guy in this episode, and it was fucking fantastic. Um, He also has a side project called Gangar. We talked about that a little bit, too. But uh, man, I really hope you guys enjoy this podcast, because like I said, it's a long one, but it's very fun from start to finish, and I'm just going to let it get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, Ghastly. Hey, cheers, buddy. Hey, here's the cheers. Thanks for having me. Dude, thanks for being here, brother. Ooh. Yeah. Now tell me the story about you time. fucking stealing this jacket. Well, I mean, it, one man's trash. This is another man's treasure. Yeah. But uh, it, w- it wasn't this jacket. This jacket just sent me down the pipeline of that kind of fleece. But um, I was in Atlanta, and some guy must have just quit his job because I opened up the trash can to throw something away, and I saw, like, that bright orange high-vis vest. It said ABM Atlanta Bus Metro or something like that. I was, I was just like, this is so fire. Like, I've never, I don't see anybody wearing these. And then as soon as I start wearing it, then what's her name? Fuck, JoJo Siwa starts like rocking them. And it's just, oh, oh, just. Swagger now now people are like, wow, oh, so you're like copying JoJo Siwa. I'm like. No, that bitch is copying me. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> she follows me, I swear. <laughs> oh, yeah, hell yeah. I mean, it is a, it is a, like a swag that not a lot of people do. If she didn't yeah. do it, like, you know. You would could have got away with I it. I could have got away with it, but yeah, I feel like I feel like that. Uh, y- you of all people would understand that the working class uh, drip is is actually goes really hard. Yeah, it's hard. It's comfortable. It's durable. Yep. Cheaper. Mm-hmm. And you're not gonna get hit by anything. Usually, I, nah. I mean, you might get hit, hit with like you know, if you're a working class person, you're probably getting hit with like divorce cases. Yeah, that's or like true. DUIs, <laughs> like those are what you're getting hit with. Yeah. But as far as like a car, nah, you're good. <laughs> Dude, but uh, yeah, man, I dig it. I fucking dig it. How are you guys? What are you doing in Denver? <clears throat> Just <coughs> sorry. Oh. Yeah, and had one of these in a long time. No, it's been since high school, man. I haven't had a bush since high school. Does it taste like uh, memories or like? It tastes like fucking throwing up. Damn, but it's great. I like it. Okay. <laughs> well, there's weed if you want weed. I don't smoke weed, but oh, there's weed. Nice. Yeah. You don't smoke. You should, you're you have quite a collection. Oh, uh, this is from our sponsor. Shout out Top Shelf out of Washington. Y'all go check oh, them very out. Very nice. Very yeah. nice. So if you um, can help yourself. Cool. Maybe in a little bit. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the uh, the whole point of us being out here was just to like. Straight up, do some boots on the ground, fucking local DJ promotion, and just come out to Denver because I got a show on this upcoming Friday, and mm-hmm. just wanted to come out and like we're gonna we're gonna have a a chess thing tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna do a Smash Bros tournament. Um, probably gonna pull up in some parking lots and just be like, hey, I'm DJing here right now. Um, and then we've got uh two more parties and. Then on Friday, I fly... Oh, so the show's on Saturday. My bad. Gotcha. And then we fly out on Friday, 
for uh, uh, San Diego, and then we come back for Saturday. But yeah, the uh, the drive was the drive was good. We we did it in like two days. Uh, it, we could have got it done in one day, but it was just a lot. Yeah, it'd be it's, miserable. Yeah, it was. It's like fifteen hours or something like that. If you go nonstop. Yeah, I had to do a thirteen hour drive the other week. You know that weekend where all the airlines were. Yeah. Yeah, I had a festival I was headlining that night, and I fucking had an early flight, and I was just oh. like, well, it's a 13-hour drive, dude. Me and my girl, when we got out the car, we were literally, like, running to the bathroom and running to get a snack. I got there 20 minutes for the snack. You got there just in time? 20 minutes before, wow. yeah. Yeah, but that 13 hours, it sucked, but when you're zoomed in like that, we got to make it. It kind of yeah. flew the fuck by. Oh, it, it goes right by. Because yeah. Because it's not just... Uh, it's not just, oh, I can't wait to get there. It's like, we need to fucking get there. Yeah. I totally get that. I'm, like, I paranoid totally. the whole time. I'm like, where the fuck are the police, dude? Yeah, I know yeah. they're around here. I'm speeding my ass off. <laughs> oh, I got to tell you one that's in that same vein. Uh, there was this time when um, uh, I think it was, was it last year or the year before? I can't remember. Everything's just blurring together these days. Um, but uh, it was after uh, Burning Man. Um, I, I finished the whole thing, did the whole week of Burning Man, Man, I was ripped out of my mind that whole week. It was a really good time. But uh, at the end of it, I was, like, driving myself home. Nobody else had me. It was just me and my my RV that I had at the time. I do not miss the RV, by the way. The van is the way to go. I was going to ask about that at some it's point. We'll get to that next. Awful. But, but continue. Awful. The RV is just too much work, way too much work. Two things that break down all the time. Large vehicles and houses. Put them into one. You got yourself a shit show. Oh, yeah, dude. But, or me in the studio trying to make something. Just <laughs> Yeah. No joke. <laughs> <laughs> just having a breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm leaving, leaving Burning Man, and I had just disassembled, like, this huge electronic tricycle uh, to try and fit in there, and I just have everything jammed in there. I'm covered in dirt. I'm absolutely disgusting. I'm exhausted. And it was like one of those times where they call it the Great Burning Man migration. It was last year. It was the last Burning Man. It was the when it rained its ass off. Huh? Yeah. No, no, no. No, that's wrong. Yeah, so it's the year before that one. Copy. It was the year before that one. And I had a show in, um, in Scottsdale. And I was supposed to be playing Maya Day Club in Scottsdale. And so I get inside of the, the RV, and I'm dry, trying to get out of this traffic. And it's just this longest, longest line. And it won't freaking move. And so I fall asleep. And as soon as I wake up, it had been moving for hours. I'm like, fuck. And so I just keep going. And then uh, I'm just too exhausted. Like, I'm holding the steering wheel. I have the show the next the next day at 5 p.m. And I'm still about uh, 15 hours away. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to. And I fall asleep. And I wake up. And it's like, how am I going to make this show? They're, like, looking at logistics. They're like, if you get to Vegas in the next, like, Five hours, maybe you can make the show. So I take my RV at 75, 85 miles an hour. I was driving it the whole time, the max speed that it would let me go. And I'm driving this huge Class C motorhome all the way to Scottsdale. And it's just, well, um, first I'm getting to Vegas. And as I pull up to Vegas, I just missed the flight. They're like, we don't know, man. We don't know if you're going to make this show. And it was like, I, I really don't like missing shows, especially if I can do anything about it. And uh, so I, I'm just like, what if I just drive there and you guys just give me an extra two hours? And they're like, if you think you can pull that off, then go for it. And, man, when I tell you I got pulled over, I got ran off the road, I, I went face-to-face -face with semi-trucks multiple times just passing everybody at 85 miles an hour in an RV, bro. And <laughs> you make it? Yeah, we made it. Hell yeah, dude. That's what's up. I was barefoot and, and covered in dirt. When I got there, I... I get out, and I run up to the show, and I'm like, I got my USB right here. They're like, what the fuck, man? I'm like, just get me into the stage. And I get up there, and, and I plug in, and I immediately jump into the pool, and it's just dirt comes off of me. And I get back up on the stage, and then someone comes up to me like, yo, bro, Waka Flocka's here. And I'm like, don't fuck with me right now. <laughs> and then I feel these two very large hands go over my shoulder. Oh, big hands, huh? Big hands. Okay. And I look up, and it's fucking Waka Flocka. And he's like, yeah. like <laughs> You look up like that. Is he a tall feller? Yeah, he's pretty tall. I'd oh, say damn. he's like at least 6'4". I'd say he's about 6'4 at minimum. I ran into that dude uh, on the streets in New Orleans one night. Yeah, yeah. He was playing in New Orleans, but we were just out partying. I was like, hey, Waka. <laughs> I just yelled brick squad. He turned around. Yeah, yeah. He he was hyped on that, or I mean, as hyped as you could be walking in yeah. your Waka Flocka. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was hyped. Yeah, yeah. I was stoked about it. <laughs> I was fucking pumped. Yeah. Dude, how long were you living? You were living in that RV, huh? 
I did the I did living in the RV for like three months, but honestly, dude, the RV is just too much. The van is much more preferable because you know if you want to leave or do anything, it's not nearly as cumbersome and it's much uh, much more streamlined. Like right now, we're we're staying at a park out here in Colorado, and then, you know I just plug in, and it's there's not any extra nonsense to it. Nothing's gonna break down, and it's just way easier to maneuver about society as far as like just going point a to point b like driving here we didn't have like if i had the rv i would have left it i would have been like i'm not i don't want to spend any more time in this thing but because we have the a van it's like oh we'll just drive straight here no problem yeah yeah so we just living in the thing for while we're in colorado gotcha gotcha yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah what what made you go live in an rv you just got fed up with the with it just good yeah, it feels good to say fuck it. You know, you get oh, tired yeah. of uh, you get tired of cycles. Whenever you're in a cycle for too long, it can make you kind of complacent to uh, adventure. Even you know, saying yes to things that you wouldn't normally. And it felt really fun to just be like, I have no idea what's gonna happen. I don't know where I'm gonna go. I don't know what we're gonna do. And then you know, as I shared that with people, people would reach out and be like, Hey, if you want to come here and play a show, or if you want to come here and do this, and it brought out all these new memories and adventures that would have never ever happened had we not just like said f it like let's go see what happens it's fucking so, tight. it's fun man yeah. yeah you know you gotta hit the fuck it button you have to hit the random button once in a while mm, I, I think, think i need to do it's that very more. healthy yeah i need to do it more i'd be worried if you pressed it too much though <laughs> <laughs> i already like all right i take it back i kind of already press it a good bit <laughs> now, that I, now, that I, now that i think about it no. we're like we're doing this i'm like let's go yeah, yeah. <laughs> my uh my fiance was checking out your instagram and she was like wow he's got some very interesting style choices <laughs> i was like which one is oh yeah suspenders and american flag underwear yeah no that's that's like right about his alley <laughs> Jessica, thumbs up. Oh, two thumbs up. Yeah, Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I got that outfit for $7 on Amazon, baby. Damn. Yeah, that's dude. A w. I'll catch them deals. That's a huge You ain't going to catch me buying nothing expensive. No, me either, bro. Nothing. I'm not into it. Most expensive thing I buy <laughs> for myself is like shoes. Yeah. Yeah. I like a nice shoes, pair of shoes. Shoes are one thing. And maybe, you know, like your home or something, anything you spend a lot of time in. That's what our my family's rule of thumb was. Never put too much money on something unless you spend a lot of time doing it. Your laptop is a good example. Your vehicle, your home, shoes. You spend a lot of time in shoes. Your bed, things like that. Hell yeah. A t-shirt that, dude, don't buy a $95 t-shirt unless it's the only shirt you're going to wear, you know? Yeah. So They say don't uh, buy nothing you can't piss on. That's real. Yeah. That's very real. <laughs> so um, there's piss all over in the studio. I don't know. I don't, very I don't, nice. nice. I, don't, I don't know, dude. You, ma you mask it well. I wouldn't even know. <laughs> it's all the weed. <laughs> it's the weed and, and uh, beer that's randomly everywhere. Nice, nice. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, what was the breaking point for the RV? Like when you're like, all right, I can't do this no more. Dude, it just had so many issues. If it wasn't the engine, if it wasn't the AC, if it wasn't uh, the the black water, you know, leaking out like uh, multiple times. There was one time like we pulled into a, uh, and it was a RV entrance, right? So it says RV entrance. I'm driving an RV. I'm going to enter right here. And the black tank has like, uh, the black water tank has a huge pipe that comes out of the back. And we pulled in and I hear this pop. I'm like, what now? And we pull up and we park at the uh, at the gas pump, and there's this huge trail of shit behind us, just leaked all over the road. And it's just like, oh god, it was the worst situation. I'm just like, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this vehicle? It's just problem after problem after problem. Highly do not recommend anybody get an RV. Don't get an RV. Your, the best kind of RV and the best kind of boat is your friend's RV and your friend's boat. Damn, don't, man. don't. Yeah, they said the best day you own a boat is like the first day and the day you sell it or yep. something like that. Yeah, those are the best days. Same and for hate, the RV. And I hate that saying because I want a boat. Dude. <laughs> I want a boat, dude. It depends I, on what kind of boat. I'm just going to get a fishing boat, just like a little bass boat. You That's know what I mean? Different. Like, That's totally nothing different. Nothing too crazy, dude. I ain't going to be out here fucking trying to race nobody. Yeah, if you get a speedboat or a yacht or something like that, you're going to have so many issues oh yeah if i could afford a yacht dude i uh i'm gonna fuck off you Pro know probably wouldn't be doing this podcast right now <laughs> i probably would yeah yeah it'd just be a lot nicer yeah yeah kyle it'd I'd, probably be on a yacht <laughs> kyle would be in a suit <laughs> that's the i would have to have him in a suit actually everybody wears suits yeah 
and we might be drinking uh, Don Perignon. Bush, Bush Tall Boys. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's how fancy we get in this bitch. I you love get it. one of them Bushes, Mitch. Oh, my bad, Kyle. My bad, dude. But that's the way, like, uh, you know, spending your money on the right things. Like, whenever I see someone wearing, like, I don't know. I'm not going to throw names or shade, but ultimately, if your clothes are that expensive and I don't, like, know until you tell me, then you wasted your money. Like, mm. I, I really don't think there's any point. We talk, me and, me and Jess talk about that all the time. Like, why would we waste our money on something that is so, it just passes on. Like, you get sick of wearing it, too. After Like, how many outfits have you been like, I'm wearing this for the next year? No, it's like, maybe like six Maybe seven times, unless unless you're me and you just wear like wife beaters all the time, and then you know it works. It works, Same, brother. Dude, it's uh, what's what's the term? It's utility over uh, value. Utility over value, always. Dude, you might be like a in a past life like a blue collar dude. You know what I mean? Like in, in a past life, you might be. Dude. I mean, I, I was past. Li- I was blue collar when I was working on the farm. Yeah, uh, dude, you have a fucking fun. amazing like. Your journey has been awesome to watch. I appreciate it. A whole that, lot of like, I just say, and I don't mean no disrespect for this, but just ups and downs, but it feels like you're in your fucking pocket right now, yeah. dude. Like, it feels like you were just doing you. I appreciate it. And you, I don't brother. know, like, if you had always been, and we'll find that out as it goes, but I mean, from a far, far, farm boy, and then you move out to LA, right? Mm. Sleeping on couches. What was it? Sleeping on Jaws' couch or whatever? Yeah, I was sleeping on Jaws' couch for quite a while. Um, and, uh, and uh, multiple couches. Uh, then there was uh, GT Swage. I don't know if you know him, but I was sleeping on his couch for quite a while. Um, yeah, and that was that was in between. Like I I had a uh, I had I don't know how many jobs for years and years, and then finally had that opportunity where Skrillex said, "Oh, come to Burning Man, uh, and we'll talk about <laughs> signing you to Alzla." And I was like, "Oh, that's awesome. Let's do that." You know, hung up my apron, quit my job, spent my last thousand dollars, and then when I got back, it's like, "All right." You've got some noise around your name. Now what? Well, I'm out of money. So I got to fucking figure something out. But you did the right move. If Skrill hits you up, you quit your job. You do. I totally agree. I don't care if you're a teacher and you got a classroom full of kids that are ready to fight. You walk out. Yeah. if If that's your goal is to end up, you know, in that realm... Then you walk out. That's it. That's yeah. the end of the story. And Lead, then dude. what? You know, they were like, "You can't go have a vacation day at Burning Man." I was like, "Then I quit, Watch me, dude." Yeah, literally. That was like, "Well, I quit. Here's my apron. I'm done." Just one of my out. favorite things to say is, "What are you gonna do? Fire me?" Yeah, that's literally one of my favorite <laughs> things to say it's of so... all time. <laughs> but in this case, yeah, just in like any situation, <laughs> they're like, "Dude, what are we doing? Like, what are they gonna do? Fire me?" Like, like, it's, like <laughs> it's like one of my favorite things to say. But in your case, <laughs> yes, they can, they are. Yeah, <laughs> but you absolutely. quit. You quit though yeah <clears throat> but you know um ultimately yeah like I, I i'm all about like cutting your teeth and putting your nose to the grindstone grindstone if you're trying to chase something absolutely like that's critical if you aren't able to do the absolute maximum then you don't deserve the bare minimum that's kind of what how it always has filtered out in my life like every time things change for the better for me it's because i'm just doing as much as i possibly can it's all i'm thinking about it's all i'm focusing on and then it changes Anytime I want something and then I'm like, oh, but I want to have a chill day and chill week and then it turns into a chill month and then I still want this thing, but it, it's not getting any closer and it's like, it's always on you. Yeah. It's, it's always on you. What are you, what are you risking? What are you investing? What are you giving away in order to get that in return? Take chances, yeah. bet on yourself, totally. fucking uh, throw a Hail Mary. Absolutely. You know what I mean? The, yeah, 100%. The universe is very reciprocal. It's, if you want this, I need this, right? Like- Oh, you want this career? I need this much time, this much pain, and this much effort. And if you're not willing to give all of those, then you don't get it. That's how the deal works, and it seems to be how it works every single time. Yeah. I know uh, Martin Liquid on How to Want, he said, that seems like the more I work, the luckier I get. Mm-hmm. That was like something that he said that really stuck That's with me. That's real. Yeah. That's so real. Yeah. But, I mean, you going from, like, a farm boy to L.A., I mean, that already, I mean, I know, like, I had culture shock leaving out of Mississippi. Like, that shit was fucked. Mm. But, like, going around <laughs> living on couches and stuff, man, I mean, I mean, if you can live on couches, you can definitely live in RVs and vans. That ain't nothing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that ain't oh, yeah. nothing. It's easy. Dude, I mean, I remember, like, you, you and I can relate on this a lot, but, like, I came from the band world, too. And we were just, when we were out on tour, 
just stand on other people's couches. Totally, like had, bro. Or people's just floors. Yeah. Like, you had a shower, dude. Literally. I'll sleep on your floor. Literally. That yeah. was the coolest part. That was one of my favorite parts. And I and I was actually really disheartened to see that in EDM, that's like, what are you doing? Like, you're going to go sleep at someone's house like, and just sleep on their couch? David, they don't even... These motherfuckers out here don't even realize how good they got it. <laughs> they dude. don't. They're like, I got a writer. I swear to God. <laughs> I got a writer yeah. crown in hospital. A writer. Yeah. You get free alcohol? <laughs> yeah, dude. You get free booze? You're going to pick me up and take me to the venue? Yeah. <laughs> there's a hotel? Taking an airplane? Yeah. <laughs> they have no idea. Oh, bro. my God. There's soap? <laughs> bro, exactly. <laughs> you know? Dude, amen. I don't have to pay for this water? Amen, dude. <laughs> like, that was, that was a special time when... Like, in, in our band, I don't know what your guys' fee was, but, like, the most we ever got paid for five band members and two merch girls was uh, $350 in a pizza. That was the most we ever got paid. On average, we were getting about $150 a show for the five, for the seven of us. Oh, yeah. And Fuck. It, and it was, and all we did is, like, at the end of the show, every single night, we're like, hey, you guys, we need somewhere to stay tonight. If you got a place we can come and party and crash, that'd be awesome. Oh, dude, I'd have That's so cool. I had I had a good looking uh like uh vocalist. He's a handsome man. Mm. And he'd hook up with the lady and like just so we all had a place to stay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like wow. that was his thing. Uh, he really he really uh he put did himself one for the on the cross for you. On <laughs> yeah, that one, huh? <laughs> took one for the team, dude. I guess you're right. <laughs> Sorry, you guys, I'm gonna have sex with this girl, but it's for you guys. I <laughs> don't wanna do this, guys. I really don't wanna do this. Uh, that's a good point now that I think about it, dude. We were just lucky. He was having fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I remember like, you know, getting like 50 bucks, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I remember we were selling our t-shirts at the uh, Walmart parking lot That's in awesome. Mesquite, Texas for a dollar. <laughs> so we had enough money to go get some Little Caesars. Wow. Yeah. Can I tell you a Little Caesars hack? Yeah, Because that's it. exactly what we ate too, because it was a $5 hot and ready. Yeah. Um, To save $5, because that's how broke we were, uh, we came up with this uh, this scam and uh, may or may not have happened in case a Little Caesars CEO is listening. Kyle, can you look up the, uh, <laughs> what's it called, the... Um, the, what's it called whenever a, a law uh, is it passes a certain time and it doesn't affect anymore? Oh, uh, yeah. What's that called? Statute of limitations. Yeah, what's the statute of limitation mm. on stealing from Little Caesars? Maybe <laughs> Let's just look it up like Little Caesars Law. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what's the statutes? Either way, you are a shit. They're not coming after yeah, you, Yeah, I'm not actually worried about <laughs> yeah, it. It's yeah. more, more but, for comedic flavor. But, but I'm also curious about yeah. what Little Caesars has to say about it. Yeah, yeah, I would be too. <laughs> um, but they, they, got on, they caught on to us towards the end. But anyway... This, the scam went like this. We would we would call Little Caesars and be like, and first we'd have some slight arguing in the background. They're like, hi, Little Caesars. Like, I, I know, I know, babe. I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone with them. Hello? Hi. Yes. Um, my name's David, and I was just in there uh, earlier today, and I specifically requested a only cheese pizza, and uh, my, uh, my girlfriend's a vegetarian and a very staunch one at that. And um, we were driving back, and she opened up the box and realized that it was covered in dead pigs. And so she threw the pizza out in, in a fit of rage. And I know you don't have to give us a free pizza because you gave us the wrong one, but we would really appreciate it. And then, like, the whole time, the girl, our, like, our merch girls would be yelling in the background just to give it that much more believability. Nice. <laughs> and they'd be like, sir, I can tell you're going through something right now. Don't worry about it. It's on the house. Come on down. <laughs> so we'd show up. And, like, the first four times, flawlessly. They're like, dude, yeah, hopefully she chills out. This is all cheese. I double-checked right now, and you can look right now. And then the the fifth time was when he was like, you guys are fucking scamming me, aren't you? Like, as he held, handed the box to us. <laughs> you it pull it, like, you fucking steal it. <laughs> fucking let it go, man. I'm already holding it. <laughs> it's already mine, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's already mine. I'm contaminated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I don't guess, I, I don't know if it's a scam, but I ended up getting, like, a, like a, some free drinks at the Applebee's because me and my ex were there fighting one night, mm -hmm. and, like, she was acting up, and then, like, she ran out, and the, the bartender's like, yo, dog, like, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> so... It if, works. That's an Applebee scam. Just go there and fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as that one guy's working, because not everyone is. is he was that a total cool. bro. He was a total yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fucking fun, dude. Yeah, I, I miss like I miss those days uh, to an extent. Like I miss just jamming with the fellas. Of course. You yeah. know what I mean? That's like you don't get to jam. 
I don't know how it was with y'all's band, but it was just like we'd all have to get together to write the music. Of like course. we're all together in one room and we're just fucking guitar player would have a fucking rift totally. or the vocalist would have some fucking vocals, yeah. some lyrics, and it was just like that's how it came about. Not just throwing which it is fun just being by yourself throwing shit at the walls, but I miss yeah. jamming with the fellas. Absolutely, man. You know, like everyone brings their own seed of an idea and everyone's like, What about this one? What about this one? And then slowly like um uh, like that's how uh our band even got to any point of notoriety at all from, like, a MySpace deathcore band. Yeah, dude, my uh, vocalist was bringing C just to get us uh, a place to stay, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Call back. And, it, wouldn't, uh, it didn't work. Yeah. Never mind. It wouldn't, I thought that was funny. No, it, 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 it <laughs> nah, hit, dude, it no, hit it but it didn't, didn't hit, hit any tones. It didn't hit nothing, dude. Continue, <laughs> MySpace de- deathcore. <laughs> I fucking hate myself. Let's yeah. keep it going. Yeah, you yeah, want another yeah. beer, dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take one more. Yeah. Um, thank you. And um, yeah, so the uh, the MySpace Deathcore thing happened for us because of uh, an idea I had from church camp. So it's crazy to think that like my entire music career uh, kind of was incumbent upon this one little thing that I learned at my church camp that I went to when I was like maybe 15 or 14. But it went boom, snap, clap, ba boom, snap, clap, snap, boom, snap, clap, ba boom, snap, clap, snap. And it's like a a thing, and I I guess it's a popular thing amongst people. Yeah, I, I think we did that at church too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that was like a thing we would all do with each other. And now and then I came to uh, my friends and I was like, all right, you play guitar, you play drums, you're a vocalist as well, uh, you play bass. What if we made a song that went boom, snap, clap, boom, snap, clap, boom, snap, clap, and then they were like, yeah, sure, and we recorded it. Like this terrible version of it, and then just overnight we had like forty five thousand friend requests, and I was like, "Did we just become famous <laughs> <laughs> on MySpace?" <laughs> That's amazing, and, and it was awesome. Uh, but that came like what you were saying from just like everyone showing up with an idea or a seed of a concept, and then just throwing it at the wall, and then. That's how really, really cool stuff can come to be. You know, it's not always you just banging your head against the wall. In fact, I feel like that holds back a lot of your best ideas. Like, yeah. Your best ideas want to come out, but the uh, anxiety of making sure they get out the right way gets in the way. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. dude. I was working on, like, a 16-bar loop for, like, four hours the day, mm-hmm. dude. And it's, <laughs> I fucking just went back and deleted some. I'm like, oh, that's it. Yep. I'm an idiot. Now it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yep. Overcooked. <laughs> yeah, overcooked, dude. <laughs> dude, uh, mm-hmm. what? where was the farm? The farm was Crow's Dairy. Uh, originally, it was a 650 cow, 650 cow farm where we hosted uh, field trips. Uh, we had about 10,000 children or kids come through like every year. So I grew up with kids coming to my house to, uh, you know, go on field trips there. And my parents put me to work at the age of about, I think, like six. I was 650 cows? No. Yeah, 650 cows. Fuck, dude. My yeah. dad's got like 40. Damn. Yeah. 650 is a lot. It, it was a it was a 40 acre farm. Wow. And um so it was a it was a hell of an operation for quite a long time. Um but you know in the 2008 housing crash or market crash, uh that the dairy business was just not the tits and um everything just came down crashing and so my parents ended up selling the farm, but they were just so adamant about the farm life that they started up again, started up a new one, started making goat cheese with about 300 to 350 uh goats at a time damn and so that that just farming has always been in my blood and like i can make cheese i can solve a lot of like mechanical problems that a lot of people would just be terrified of and you know i can you know it, and it's like i like having this extra little and i'm sure you can relate to all of this being being as you are is like having <laughs> having <laughs> having all these extra abilities you know you know that like all right let me put it this way if the world end was ending right now, like all the DJs are getting cannibalized. Yeah. Every single one of them will be eaten. And I'm murdering people for their stock. Literally, literally. <laughs> <laughs> and, but but if you're if you're like, wait, 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 I can make cheese. They're like, oh shit, you're shit. good, man. You're good. We'll use some breast milk, make some person burgers, you know, like easy. That would be your role <laughs> in the apocalypse. You think you'd be the cheese man? I'd be, I'd, I'd help make the the cheese person burger. Absolutely, I'd be the cheese guy. Fuck yeah. Because what the fuck are you doing as a DJ? No one needs a DJ in the apocalypse. No, Zero dude. People. Uh, I could be. I'd be the hunter. I'd be a hunter and gatherer. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'd be that. That's solid, yeah. Yeah, I could be the hunter and gatherer. I'm good at tracking. Mm-hmm. I'd be the jester, you know what I mean? I'd be making folks laugh. Yeah, I guess. You that's need, necessary. You need, you need to get your spirits up. Yeah. <laughs> that's about it. I think that's that's about it. If that happened in the apocalypse, those are my skills. I'm like, guys, I can go get us some food, brother. As long as you can do that, yeah, that's everything. I yeah. don't have a green thumb, dude. You don't have a green thumb, though? No? Negative. I can't grow. I won't say I can't because I don't like that attitude, but, like, I just haven't done it. Mm. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a lot easier than you'd think. I'm sure. You just put yeah. it in the ground, water it, fucking yep. talk to it every it now goes. and then. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, I think that shit's real, by the way. It is, actually. Like, talking to it makes a huge difference. It actually Massive is. Massive difference. It's, Kyle, can you look up the studies on this? Because I'm uh, pretty positive. It's like a actual thing. Talking to your plants does help them grow and, like, certain musics yeah. talk to them. I want to know, like, if, like, the tone matters because it's like you know whenever you're tying up a plant like whenever on a stick what if you're like yeah you like that you little fucking bitch like you're like <laughs> like spitting on it for water like yeah. you starve it but then you give it what it wants like yeah. if you like kind of tease it a little bit I sexually as long as plants. long as it's uh i think it all comes down to the intention and the vibration okay. like if, if you're if it really is a positive but kind of naughty sexual intention yeah, yeah. i think that comes off as an overall positive you know it's like there's the barometer of like neutral positive negative I think, you know, overall that ends that ends up around here somewhere. Yeah, dude, this potatoes might end up hooch. Yeah. <laughs> you, you guys are gonna <laughs> You guys are gonna like this actually. So What's that? plants respond to the vibrations of nearby sound, which turns into two key genes inside of them that influence their gl- their growth. Plants also increase photosynthesis production in response to carbon dioxide, which is what we exhale, which is why talking to them helps. Oh, uh, interesting. Grow. I wonder if you fart on a plant. <laughs> that has to do something. It has to. It's absorbing everything. <laughs> it's, a, it's an exhale. <laughs> it's vibrations. <Yeah. laughs> you just have vibrations on your plant. Yeah, all of these are fart vibration grown, dude. My mom's just in the car and fucking letting it rip. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to do something. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't do nothing. That's for sure. <laughs> That's a fucking silly Good way thing. to put it. Yeah. Such a fucking silly thing, dude. Uh, someone, someone out there, please find out for us. Please fart on your plants. <laughs> there needs to be a study. Let us know. It's <laughs> so silly, dude. We were talking about a second ago um, treating yourselves. Oh wait, wait. What? What was the state? You said where it was, but like you didn't say the oh, state. Oh, Buckeye, Arizona. Uh, Arizona. It, was, it was Avondale, Arizona for the for the cow farm, and then Buckeye, Arizona for the goat farm. Damn, having a farm in Arizona, that'd be fucking wild. Hot as shit, man. Yeah, dude. It's so fucking hot. Yes. Yeah. And Mississippi is hot, but and it's humid. So like it's I mean, but Arizona's just desert. Dude, 117 on average for a little bit the other for like the last couple weeks. It's been 117 multiple times. Just once it gets into the, once it gets into the, once it passes 113, that's when I'm just like, I can't, I can't. Uh, 112, dude. I can hang out. But as soon as it starts getting up there, it's like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to have to take a knee here. This is fucking too hot. We'd get like 100 degrees, but then like the heat index from the humidity would be something like that too. So yeah. you just walk out there and you're wet. Oh yeah, yeah. The, but everything. The heat index. I, yeah. I like that. It's like, <laughs> well, it's 95, but it. Feels like 117. <laughs> yeah, that's fucked. That's interesting. I wonder how they. <laughs> it, it's just I, one guy with the opinion, you know. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> how do they grade it? <laughs> exactly. How do they grade it's, it? It's just it's just a critique of the weather from one guy. It's just Santa Claus out there in the fucking yeah. middle of summer, dude. It's 120 degrees dude, outside. It's, like, at it's, least. Like, it's 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 87. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it feels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, but we were saying something earlier about like uh, you know not buying stupid shit. Mm-hmm. How do you treat yourself? If you're gonna go treat yourself and buy you something fucking cool, just Su- food, food, sushi. Oh fuck yeah, dude! Sushi, really expensive steak, something like that would probably be how I treat myself. Outside of that, I don't. Know. Dude, I went to like oh, a high gear oh, ahead, sometimes. Sometimes gear. Well, that's yeah, like that's, work. That's yeah. work. So yeah, yeah. Mm. I went to like this high dollar sushi place. One thing that. Denver like has a problem with is it certain areas are like gentrified and so like the the, the restaurants are just automatically more expensive because it's a mm-hmm. nice area mm-hmm. and the food isn't <laughs> nicer. I'm like, why did I just pay this much money for this shitty yeah. sushi? Like fourteen dollars for a cappuccino that has like a picture of a cat on top of it. <laughs> it was all like hand rolls too. It was like the laziest way to oh, do it. Oh, the lazy. Oh, the it's hand like, rolls. I know, but it was just like here's the fish, here's the rice. Boom, you're done. It's like seen 15 bucks. Yeah. 
that's that's kind of hectic. That uh, there's one in LA that is I'm, I don't know the prices right now off the top of my head, but Kazunori, they are really dank and they they specialize in the hand roll. So I'm not anti hand roll, but if it's uh, if it's done right, it's it's absolutely dank. Um, so you're saying that the ones out here are just kind of like I won't okay. say ones out here. This is the one I went to the other evening. Uh, yeah, okay. I was just like, oh, this seems nice, and it was just all right. Yeah, I'm like Kroger could have did that about the same job. Kroger, yeah, Kroger sushi, yeah, <laughs> yeah. dude, I'm t- <laughs> is that a thing? <laughs> Hell yeah, I didn't know that. Was well, a it's, thing. it's King Supers out here, but it's owned by Kroger. Uh huh. And yeah, my mouth's getting wet just thinking about it, dude. All I'm right. fucking good stuff. You'd be surprised, dude. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. But well, you will. You could get some bad shit. I will say that for sure. Yeah, I think the Walmart right down the street got sushi too. I ain't done that. I, I ain't that brave. Uh, yeah, sushi's kind of ruined for me as far as like eating anything that's below a certain tier. I can't do it anymore. Yeah. Uh, after uh, even like because in Japan, even their uh, their Seven Eleven sushi in Japan is just absurd quality. Absurd quality. I was watching a video the other day about this dude. He was fucking just getting some sushi out the 7-Eleven in Japan. Mm-hmm. Were you watching the same fella? No, we were just out there. Oh, fuck me, dude. You're cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I can> like... <laughs> fuck me, dude. I've never been to Japan. I'd love to go. Yeah. Is it awesome? Oh, it's um, in uh, in my opinion and Jessica's opinion as well, it's, it's like Civilization 2.0. Like, uh, people are so kind and respectful. The food is zero. There's, like, no poison in the food. Um, they're rated uh, the eighth safest country in the world. Um, you know where we are? Kyle, can you look it up? I want to fact check them, but go ahead. I, actually, let me guess. Guess. Uh, we're number 17. Way lower. All right. We're number 40. F- lower. Lower? Shit, we're number 79. No fucking way. 104? How many countries are there? How many countries are there? There's 196 countries. Yes. Okay, thank God. I was like, I I guess guess kind of like in the 20s in the beginning because I didn't know how many there are. But how many are there? What what are we ranked? From what I last read is somewhere in the ballpark of 115 to 130. Out of 100? Out of 196. That ain't too good, brother. No, it's not. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that ain't too good, so, my God. But that's the thing. It's like while we're in Japan. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Kyle, yeah, fact check us real quick. <laughs> I Japan. just wanted to say, um, just like we have a heat index guy, we also, it looks like we have a peace index guy. <laughs> uh, that's just how it feels. That's what it, that's what it says right here, the peace global it's, peace they're, index. They're at war, but it feels really chill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's bombs from the sky, but dude, that fucking sushi is pretty cheap and delicious. <laughs> Oh, shit. Dude, that Kroger's got some great sushi. <laughs> uh, America's not on the top 15. Oh, well, no sure. shit, Sherlock, sure. but where are we? Um, You'll, he'll yeah, he'll find it, dude. Yeah. He's good. I'll at, let you know whenever I pull it up. He's good at this type of things, but he'll find it. Damn, cool. but that's not <laughs> No, it's, we're, it's not we're great. We're not going to do it. We're but, not doing good. Uh, but Japan, man, <laughs> let me tell you, it's so chill, bro. Like, we're, like, we're walking around. And uh, we looked a little bit lost for just a moment. For just a moment, we're like, uh, someone comes up right away and like, hey, are you lost? I can tell. I can tell you where to go. And they show us where to go. Um, one, of, one of the prime examples that like, like it's at the top was we went and we had sushi at this place where it was, a, it was like a father and his daughter and his family. They all made the sushi. It was just the four of us. And we were sitting across the table from them. And at, at the meal was fantastic. They were awesome. They invited us back and blah, blah, blah. And after the meal was over, we uh, were about to leave. We're, we're finishing up the check. And I see the chef taking off his apron. And I'm like, what's he doing? And uh, they walk us out. And they walk us out to the street. And, uh, and they're just bowing and bowing. And they make sure that we get all the way down the alleyway and turn before they go back inside. So we go about probably like, I'd say 30 yards away from them. I look back and they're still bowing and wow. just just like saying thank you. And Damn. it's just like, wow, they're just, they gave that many shits about us. Like we're we're just, and apparently they do that for everybody. Like the the consideration for your fellow human is insane out there. And it just was every single second we were there. It was like bright colors, insane art, friendly people, delicious food and there's no poison in the food. All the things that America's allowed to inject in food here None of it is allowed there. And you see how healthy everyone is there. And it's just like, 
I don't know. I feel like they got something figured out. I really do feel like Japan's got something figured out. It's not perfect like any place in the world, but they've got a good thing going for sure. Damn, man. That's awesome. That's crazy. They gave that much of a shit. I know I was in Brooklyn, dude. The, the guy threw the pizza at me and said, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. You yeah. Know? <laughs> like, okay. And I was actually pretty happy with that. Like, that, was, <laughs> like, that was pretty polite. He could have cussed at me more. Oh, uh, sh- <laughs> is, is a shameful 131st. 131st, yeah. Damn, shameful. That, why did Google have to add that fucking... <laughs> <laughs> no joke. That fucking adjective, dude. Fuck. If and that's, that's even crazy. an adjective. And it, there's 198 countries, right? Am I wrong? Um, He'll find it, dude. dude He'll find it. Here. A shame, <laughs> dude, shameful. A shameful shame. one. Shame on America first. right now. <laughs> I think uh I think I'm me and my old lady. 195. Ooh, you was wrong. I was wrong on that one, damn. Russia mm-hmm. might have took one. Yeah. But uh <laughs> <laughs> But uh I think I'm gonna take me and my old lady to Japan after my tour. Oh man, you should go in the beginning of the next year. Mm, absolutely so go. Not, that's like I don't I don't like trap. I don't know why. I don't like leaving the country. I've really? I've done it very little, but the idea of it stresses me out. Really? But there's very few places I want to go, and Japan's one of them. Yeah, I yeah. highly recommend it, man. And especially now, um, because the yen is um, it, it's decreased in value massively, so everything's half off. Every, everything that used to be, if not the same price as Amer- as like California or something like that, it's all half off. So you'll spend like, what, 35 bucks and you'll get a full two two or three course meal, tons of food with drinks, 35 bucks. That's amazing. Maybe 35 bucks. I'm a cheap date too, so that sounds good to me. Yeah, you will, you will spend such a small amount of cash in Japan right now, unless you really want to fucking, you know, get really, fri- uh, not frivolous, frivolous is saving money. I'm What's a cheap. When, I'm cheap. You're cheap. I'm the same way, man. I mean, we're drinking Bush Light. Yeah, that's and, true. And I got this weed for free. That's true. <laughs> Can I have one hit of the? Help yourself, brother. Whatever you want. Lemon cherry gelato. Yeah, that's why it's here. Right. I didn't tell the guy that I didn't smoke weed, but hold. I will say, if you're about to smoke it, hold up. <laughs> hold, <laughs> hold up. Hold up the the can the, the glass. Oh, yeah. Say, shut out top shelf. Shut out to top shelf. <laughs> yes, <laughs> top shelf. So at the top of the list. Yeah, dude. All <laughs> of their go. weed is top shelf. It looks it looks very good. Well, I'm I'm actually not great at this part. Am I? Let me try. Can it. I just put it. You, you're gonna <laughs> try. Okay, Let me I'll try. It. It. I'm gonna ask you a question. And you're gonna talk to me. All right. While <laughs> if you need me to do it, Mitch. I can <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> dude. I got bail. this. <laughs> I got this, dude. So, how long has Gasly been going on? Because I know you get this new thing kind of yeah fucking around. But before we get into that, I gotta sure, talk sure. about Gasly. Absolutely. Um, so I started the project, named it on October 19th, uh, 2011 was when I very first was like, I'm going to release music and it'll be under the name Gasly. That was the first time. And from that inception till about, um, late 2014, it was nothing. And it was late 2014 when I got my first, like, Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. And then things took off from there. Um, but I was uh I was living on Skid Row at the time in an apartment complex with like uh, seven other people. Whoa. Yeah. How all right. Skid Row. Yeah. That's got to be fucking insane. The most terrifying experience of my life. Yeah. Just that's why down. that's why we're 131, <laughs> a shameful yeah. 131. <laughs> Cuz we alone. got Skid Rows exactly. <laughs> yeah, we got, we got things rows. like Skid Row. Um yeah, and that's the thing is like Skid Row like they they if anywhere that's really peaceful, they tally out, you know, they make up for their slack. As far as like danger, um, I've I've had it. I've seen and seen and done a lot. I had a lot of things happen to me on Skid Row, such as uh, being chased with a knife. Um, uh, I've seen many dead bodies. I've seen. I saw many many people just get like their faces smashed in in broad daylight. Fuck, do you own a so, gun? And in L.A., it's very illegal. It's very illegal to have a gun. And no, I did not have a gun at that time when I was I was just walking around, fucked, bro. And I was. I was working at a, I was working at a, at Mastro's Steakhouse. And, uh, so you had, to, and I was a host there. So you have to wear a three piece suit when you work at Beverly Hills Mastro's Steakhouse. But I lived on Skid Row. So in order for me to get to work, I would have to walk down about three blocks of Skid Row to get to the bus. And it was all in a three piece suit. So as I'm walking down, you know, oh, you're getting you can called. imagine, <laughs> can- you can only imagine the kind of like, 
Oh, you're not from around here. I can tell you're in the wrong place, boy. Like, oh, you got a pretty Whoa. mouth. Yeah, literally all kinds of terror um, surrounded me in that area. I, I, I mean, I, can't, I might as well just tell you one story real please, quick. Please, please. Um, this was towards the, uh, the end of my year and three months of living in that apartment. It was actually the last month, and I was like, oh, I'm finally getting out of here. And at that time, I was working at a place called After School All Stars, so I was dressed up as an after school teacher uh, because I was. Hell and yeah. I, I get off the bus and I'm walking back down those uh, those three blocks, and right on Fifth and I believe it's Main. That's where you'll find the Midnight Mission, um, or and and right there. No, no, midnight, it's, I'm sorry, it's, it's on Fifth Fifth Street in San Pedro. I, I said that wrong. Um, What's but the Midnight Mission. Midnight right? Mission is a. Uh, it was started off as an organization to uh, help um, Vietnam vets get back on their feet. Hell yeah! And then it. And then a lot of Vietnam vets were homeless, and then it started attracting more and more and more homeless. And then one day, it was just an overwhelming amount of the population, as far as homeless people in California, all flocked there because it's free food. Free sleep, free housing, and obviously a lot of drugs were in that area. So a lot of them started flocking to that area. I digress. And as I'm walking, oh, it's good. It's, I mean, that's yeah. good stuff. I, I, I'm genuinely curious. No, I'm happy, and I'm genuinely happy to share it. Um, and and so uh, I'm walking across the street, and I see this huge mob of people just running out of out of the uh, out of the side of the road. I didn't even know where they came from. But it was a huge horde of them just running after this one guy. And they run up and they grab him in the middle of the intersection. Like, here's a, the red light and the green light. And cars are just stopped in the middle because of what's happening. And they grab this guy. And they put his mouth up on the bumper of a car that's just stopped in traffic. And they stomp him all the way in, bro. Oh, my it God. Was really, Did you just watch a murder? Yeah. It was, it was it, it, I didn't stick around to find out if he was alive or not. But I, I don't know how he could have survived it. And I watched that happen. And I was just like... Oh boy, thank God I'm getting out of here. And so I continue walking. And as I'm walking, this uh this this shirtless guy covered in tattoos, he just comes up and he's like, Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. WrestleMania, baby. <laughs> oh yeah. <It's, laughs> and he goes, he goes like this, he goes, I got my machete, I'm ready. And he looks over at me and he goes, he looks right in my eyes and says, "Are you ready, white boy?" Oh uh, and, hell yeah, dude! I'd be me, pumped. And I had my hair, I had my hair like swooped like this, and I was, <laughs> and I weighed like thirty pounds less than I do right now, and I was just like, "I don't have a machete, but I'm ready," you know. <laughs> he was not having that. He was not Damn. having that. That's and, what happens when you don't have guns. So like, I got a machete. You ready, white boy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that and, is incredible. And he he said, and after I told him, I, I I I was like, I don't have a machete, but I'm ready. He goes like this. He says, "Nah, you ain't ready." Oh, and, he, and, he, oh, and, he, and he puts his hand on the back of my neck and starts walking me across the street. Hell yeah! And I look across the street, and He's it's the captain all now. it's <laughs> uh, it's all cats that are covered in tattoos. Now, in my in my mind's eye, I remember thinking it was MS13. Oh, uh, some but of the fools? I can't I can't guarantee that it was MS13. All I remember is they were all tatted up and they all had baseball bats and I was being walked towards them as a sacrificial goat and I was just like and, and all the instincts that I had developed over the year and 3 months of living on Skid Row they all came out at once and I just reached around the back of his neck and I grabbed his neck and I said listen here motherfucker I've been living on this goddamn block for a year and 3 months now and I'll be damned if this is how it fucking ends and if you don't get your hands off me right now I'm going to suck whole your fucking cock I'm gonna suck your dick <laughs> <laughs> that would get him let go of you, dude. I'm gonna suck your fucking cock. Well, it depends. <laughs> we're on Skid Row. He might be like, "Oh, we're keeping okay, you." Cool. Yeah. <laughs> but but I I yell all this shit. I'm sorry, out I interrupted. I just no, I don't it care. I don't, it's good. It was it good. I could. Came, I was feeling that too. It came to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it did came to you, and uh, <laughs> and uh, and I came to him. And at the end of the at the whole, and then this was the best part of the whole thing, as far as like you know. Exhaling a sigh of relief, he just he releases his grip off my off my neck, and he goes, "Well, I guess you are ready, white boy," and just fucking let me go. I was so stoked that I wasn't gonna die that day because it was definitely right there. Well, you handled it right. Whenever like you're around some thug motherfuckers and you're the only white boy, 
you got to think. I mean, there's been many comedians who have made many jokes about it, but like, what the fuck did that white boy do to fucking <laughs> be able to hang out with these crazy sons yeah. of bitches? Oh yeah, you have to start fucking like hissing at people. Well, it's just like if you end up uh, if you end up in prison, that's what they say is like you have to go out there, find the biggest, meanest guy you can, and fight Suck him. Suck his fucking cock. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I feel like you're trying to tell us something. <laughs> I'm trying to go and skid row and suck cock. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to do. I hope this is good. There's always openings for that position, man. <laughs> right, for sure. Who doesn't like a good cock suck? <laughs> <laughs> fucking stupid ass. I'm serious. <laughs> Calling someone a cock sucker is not really that, like, we all love cock suckers. That's true. We love them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's more of a compliment these days. Yeah, so so Skid Row. Okay, back to the, my yeah. original question. That was awesome, by the yeah. way. You handled it like a G. <laughs> um, so 2011, Gasly. Yeah. That's that's how long it was going on. Yeah, and that's that's actually why I, I came up with the name was because of Skid Row. A lot of people um, in the beginning, they're you know, I was like, they're like, what do you call him? Like, Ghastly, and they're like, oh, like the Pokemon. I'm like, no, it's like the word, you know, terrifying, horrifying, you know, because that's the kind of experiences that I was having. I was like, yeah, it's scary. <laughs> and now they're like, oh, Gengar. You're yeah. like, no, dude, I'm just in a gang. Yeah, just in a gang. <laughs> <laughs> like me, me and the fools be getting at it, dude. Yeah. No, that's something I've learned. If 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 your um, if your base is trying to uh, if they start attaching something to you as far as like oh so like the Pokemon or for like for instance like Cyclops like oh the egg thing like the egg thing was a total uh, just fan made idea and it's like don't fight back on it ride with it yeah ride with it you know and you see this in all kinds of uh, celebrities even political people all of them. They all do the same thing. If their base starts attaching something to them, they ride it. Thanks, man. Let's see if it's any good. Kyle, could do you have anybody have a lighter on them by chance? If not, uh, Kyle, could you run up to Andre's room and ask him for one? Yeah. If if uh, I actually look on the coffee table in the living room, there might be yeah. one on there. You but, know, what I'm gonna give a, I'm gonna give a fully honest review on this top shelf here. If dude, it's, I actually that's the first time I've touched weed. <laughs> God knows ever. No, I've, oh, I've and done God it knows how long. God okay. knows how long. Dude. I was like, man, I didn't mean to. Pop your cherry there. <laughs> well, I'm trying to use... Let's use this as an ashtray. Oh, copy, copy. And then I'll use uh, this oh, yeah. to... <laughs> this is a fucking... Was that a pig squeal, dude? Oh, no, my, my pig oh, squeals are not what they used to be, but I still have my gutturals. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Yeah. I learned I could do metal vocals very well. I was the backup. I was the drummer, but I would do backups. And then I remember in the studio one day, they were like, we were trying to get a feature from... Uh, as the singer from Gideon. And and we couldn't get her going. That name is so familiar. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, anyway, so I got in the booth, and they were like, "Oh shit, you could do it." Yeah. And then I continued to do it, and did it in some other songs. Would Would you be cool showing me a low real quick? <laughs> I'm gonna suck your dick. Close. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get yours, dude. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I'm fucking hard. <laughs> that was impressive, dude. <laughs> Fuck, I'm just gonna cut out the part where I do it. What'd you say, Kyle? <laughs> what do you say? I don't see one. Do you ask uh, Andre? No, you can't cut out the I part. Oh, uh, just walk in. He's had his headphones. You can't on. cut out yours. Okay. You can't cut yours out because I wouldn't normally <laughs> growl, suck your dick. <laughs> Cheers to that, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Shamefully, one thirty-one. <laughs> No, so 2011, the landscape of the dance music scene at that time is just so much different. It was totally different. It was Skrillex, Avicii, and, uh, you know, all the top dogs like Zed's Dead and all of them, and, and Zed in general, and all of them just popping off and doing the fucking thing. And, yeah, it was all about the music then. Branding, of course, too. But, like... Nobody was worried about content. Oh know? my god, dude! Nobody was worried about it. It's Sounds like, incredible. Is the song good? And is the brand good? I hope that it's was smokable. It. it should be. Yeah, we'll it's find. Yeah. We'll find out. And I might. I might. No, nah, I shouldn't. But like, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> few good. times I've done it on the pod, it's always a train wreck. Just like, wait, what'd you just say? <laughs> no, I get it. Well, I'm. I'm actually a very light weed smoker. I'll hit it once or twice and then I put it down. Yeah. I, I can't fucking, I'm not like some of these cats who can lit, sit there and just get lit Montgomery off their own fucking shit and just smoke like four or five of these. I can't do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like I, the subtle high. Yeah, I can't do none of it if I'm being honest. 
I just hate myself when I get high sometimes. That's a part of it. Yeah. That's a part of it. They say it's the good, that's like good part. It makes you like question what you do. And I'm like, I yeah. don't like to question anything. I like to yeah, just yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, the send it button like you're talking about yeah. earlier. Well, you know, it's uh, the weed isn't doing anything bad to you. It's just you don't like what it's showing you. Yeah. It's what I've come to realize. So whenever I'm like, oh, fuck, why am I like this? It's like, dude, it's just trying to let you know that you're being a little bit too anxious. Just fucking relax. You know, the whole, the sun's going to blow up. You're going to be fine. No one gets out alive. We're on a spinning rock. Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> and it's it's spherical, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah, the... I'm like to what I was saying, dude. The fucking... You weren't thinking about making content. How hard... I won't say how hard has it been to adapt, but what's it been like adapting to just what the fuck it is nowadays and just... Yeah. I mean, it's kind of always been this when you think about what the music industry is um you know like even the beatles they did shocking things to get attention and you know look at look at prince or michael jackson or anyone who's done some kind of really shocking thing to get the world's attention it's kind of it was never really the hard part for me personally because it just always seemed like a part of it i just wasn't too stoked when it got to the point where it's like yeah, man, you gotta you gotta get those social media numbers up, and it's like, well, what about the songs? Yeah, you know? and and losing sight of that is like the scariest part of this whole content uh, focused uh, media and and market because you know, like really shit music sometimes gets really successful because it's connected to really good memes. Like how many meme sounds we know just because. Of subconsciously hearing them all the time, things like this. <laughs> I've been seeing that meme lately. The the old like Family Guy thing. I don't know. I, but yeah, the hot. I mean, ask that same question again. I got off track. <laughs> oh, I wasn't really asking a question. Got, got you. Let me pause. Kyle, what yeah. is going on? Yeah, we, uh, camera two went down. And I'm trying to figure out. Why. Should you try I'll, turning it off and on, on again? I'll do on this third one right here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm running some technical. Just try turning it off and on again. <laughs> it works every time. Yeah, <laughs> my bad, David. I'm I'm sorry. No, for it's saying. totally cool. I'm, I, I just care. I just see Kyle back here going around. I was, I was like, something must be wrong. No, it's all good. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it it, it is, dude. I've I mean, you're talking about like it whenever you're like, all right, I got to think about the content now. Like I've I've seen it like ruin artists. I mean, it's one hundred percent. It's gotten in my way too, where I'm yeah. just like, oh, I got to do content today. It was like I got to finish this fucking totally. song. What am I doing? Totally. Um, one thing. If I could, because it's not going away. That's the thing. It's like, I'd love to sit here and be like, oh, you know, just, just focus on the music, which is like, yes, you should definitely hyper focus on the music more than anything else. But being able to promote it, here's the thing. It's like, now we can get our shit out there for free. And you, it, like every single day, what if you had every single day, you got a lottery ticket or you, you could make multiple lottery tickets in a day. Every single piece of content is another lottery ticket, mm -hmm. and 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 it's free. You know, if I offered you a bundle of free lottery tickets, you fucking grab them right away. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, I would. And and but and that's exactly what a social media post can be. You know, if you find a way to like genuinely, um, uh, kind of like translate your personality into a what eight second clip, that is where people develop. Because now I don't think fans just want. A good song. They want to know that you're a good person, that you have, uh, that you're funny, that you're relatable, that they can feel something on your level that makes them feel like this isn't just an artist. This is someone who could be my friend. And that's kind of the uh, that's the way that it's been for a while with these. What's it called? Uh, it's a type of relationship you have with someone online who doesn't know you. What is that? Paris. Paris thank you, Jess. What's it called? Paris social relationship. Paris social. Yeah. So relationship. You, you start to develop a relationship with someone strictly from social media. They have no idea who you are, but you love them. It's, oh, it's it's like it's a, a, relationship. a lot of a lot of it's it started. I started hearing that term thrown around a lot by like Twitch streamers and stuff because a lot of those fans do, you know, like they're giving them thousands, some of them thousands, tens of thousands. And just for them to say, oh, thank you so much, Ray Ray, for the ten thousand dollar donation. That's so cool of you. And then move on, you know. And, and that's a parasocial relationship. So 
my point being is like it's got to that level and it's not going away. And yeah. so it's best to just figure out how to do it in your own way and do it naturally if that's what you are like trying to strive for and like get your music out there. You know, it's not always going to be getting on a like a Spotify playlist. That's not always what does it. I've seen my music grow more when I just make fire content with it, mm -hmm. you know, and and think about all you probably have a ton of songs that you put out, you promoted and now you're done with them. Now they're out there. Right. And I and I'm I'm speaking from my place too. No, right no, now I've got right. tons of music that I put out there, promoted it. Now I'm done with it. And you have to remember, you, if you take just the right video, and or put just the right words, and then that song suddenly, a song you put out four years ago, explodes out of nowhere. Happens all the time. Happens all the time. Like that one. Um, remember the. Nothing here to care about that like really sad like Midwest emo punk song And like people did like a, a It's silly so funny that you said Midwest emo dude. I've recently yeah. learned that's a subgenre. Oh, it's totally a subgenre. It's, it's an awesome subgenre. Yeah, <laughs> it's a fucking awesome subgenre. Dude, we got to get out of this town and it's <laughs> yeah. like beautiful It's like great guitar great guitar and yeah. there's Midwest emo songs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somehow sounds like old school Silverstein, even though they're from Canada. They're from Canada? Yeah, dude. I did not realize that. I think they are. Kyle, can you fact check me? Yeah. Uh, what was the name of it? Silverstein. I think yeah, they're from all, Canada. All one word, yeah. Yeah. I think they're from Canada. Yeah, wow. But it sounds like Midwest emo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's very Midwest emo. <laughs> yeah. Where are they from? Uh, Ontario. Yep. yep. Ontario. Cool. Ontario. Wow. Yep. But, um, I'm, dude, one of the pieces of content I see that you do is really fucking awesome. You're like, who's got a flash drive? Yeah, yeah. So that actually, like, I wasn't even doing it for content. I was like finishing my set, and I was just like, something in me was just like, okay, let's just see. You know, someone want to come up and help me finish this? Are right they now. playing their tunes? I mean, um, so I've done it a couple times. I only posted about it once, but I've done it quite a few times. And uh, when they come up uh, in that video, I don't think it was his song, um, but multiple times there was one guy. Shout out to Psyoptic uh, in uh, where was that? That was in that was in Florida. What was what was the city? Was it Fort Lauderdale? Yeah, Fort Lauderdale in Florida. Psyoptic comes up and he's playing all of his tracks. I was like, bro, these are fire. These are actually really good, Hell you know. Yeah. And it's like it's crazy. This town and like genuinely liking the songs. I'm like, this talent's just hanging out in the audience, and you know, he's just. One social media post away, you know? Yeah. Because the music's good. Once the music's good, you just need to find out how to get people to hear it. And mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying about the lottery tickets. So, you know, it's it's a double-edged sword, like every sword. It'd be weird if there was a sword without an edge on one side. Mm. Oh, that's called a katana. Yep. Yeah. That is a good way to look at it. It's a lottery ticket. Yeah. And it could be a winner. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people just, they put so much anger at it. Like, oh, this sucks. And they complain about it and i even am guilty of this before i've been like this fucking sucks like i feel like i'm like having to perform like a dancing monkey sometimes in some of these well the goal that i or what i figured out from that is then don't dance like a monkey be yourself and so that was kind of a changing point on like you know like what would i do in this situation oh i'll do this oh dude i might that's actually a good idea maybe dance like an actual monkey on a fucking video that could work there you go that's, <laughs> that's a lottery ticket <laughs> it could hey it worked for uh the bloodhound gang really you and me baby ain't nothing but mammals remember yeah. that joint? yeah hell yeah. yeah man that's a fucking jam dude <laughs> which needs a remix by the way someone needs to remix it I'm just saying I'm just saying it's like it 130 BPM, it's perfect. Oh, it's easy. Yeah. It's ready to it's Yeah, ready it to can fuck. go it can go house or bass, either way. Yeah. Yeah, dude. One of the cool things about like um, you know, just going and listening to like your catalog, it's just like, you know, whenever like the bass house thing was popping, like you was there having some bass house hits. Now it's like the heavy shit and you're like, you know, doing some of that with Gengar, like mm -hmm. fucking like um I don't know, man, just like catching on and trying those vibes is just like a lot of people will do just like one thing mm -hmm. and it's cool that you will be like all right this is popping right now let me fucking try my hand at this well if i like something i'm gonna try it Amen, absolutely dude. you know like i like I, i'm like every human like there's multiple facets i'm not just like at all times you know sometimes i'm about the groove sometimes i'm about the wonk sometimes i'm about the the beauty and the melody it's all, you know, incumbent upon, like, what happened that day or how I'm feeling. 
And so I'm not going to like deny myself. Like if I really feel an inspiration towards an idea at a certain BPM and a certain like colorful style of writing, I'm not going to get in my way and stop myself because I need to stay pure and true. It's like, no matter what, I'm going to write it. And if I really like it, I'm going to fucking share it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Dude, what's it like DJing with a mask on? It's like, uh, it's like DJing with like a goalie mask. It's not the worst thing in the world. The only, like right now we're at the third version of it and it's actually pretty solid. The first one was hell though. The first one was actual hell because it was like, there was plastic shields instead of like a fiber mesh where air could go through. So it was just, just breathing hot air into my face for an hour and a half and the lights weren't perfected. So they were super bright right in my face. And then I had the fog machine on the back of my head and that weighed probably four pounds on its own. And so I'd be running that. And then if I ran out of fog juice, then I, I was like, well, what do I put in here? I'm like, oh, I'll just put in vape juice. So there'd be like really <laughs> that work? massive amounts of nicotine just going up. Does that into, work? Yeah, man. That's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. That's so, incredible. Because it's made of the same shit. It's all made of uh, um, uh, vegetable oil. Uh, what? Propylene glycol. Thank you, second half of my brain. Propylene glycol is uh, it's in all of the vape juices. So yeah, it works. So I had I had tons and tons of nicotine just pouring into my face. I can't see. It's hot as shit, and I'm blind. And uh, that I did that for an hour and a half for about 20, 20 shows. And by the way, super dangerous. The uh, fog machine on the back of my head was homemade, so you know it wasn't necessarily passing any kind of safety. Sp- standards or anything like that you ever um, just leaking on you bro. wait wait kyle can you pull up a picture of this mask real quick yeah the the gengar mask absolutely i want to see it i want to see it as we talk about it you gotta add that h bro you got the gengar oh i yep i missed it gengar yeah the gengar ghastly mask that might help out too i want to see a picture of this thing and you're making this yourself no, no, I'm making it with the team. Uh, they go by Replicant Lab. It's pretty and fucking so that's, badass. That's the very first one right there. That's the very first one. So those are plastic shields. And uh, that one, it looks really cool. And the and the one with the lines, that's the second one. That's where they started putting in the fiber so I could breathe. It looks they badass, took, They took the man. machine off of my head. A lot of DJ masks end up looking kind of fucking gay, but this is pretty fucking, <laughs> this is pretty rule. This rules, dude. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Damn. Yeah, you're just getting blinded. Yeah. Is that no, like a, dude, I mean, having to clean that bitch every night, huh? So the, that's the one thing is it gets sweaty in there. So you have to like really clean it out. Yeah. 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 I did a uh, side project and Kyle, you can try to pull up a picture of this. I don't know if there are any pictures on the internet. I had a side project before like taboo. It's called gang bang. Gang and, bang. Yeah, it's spelled with V's instead of A's uh, as we do. But uh, we had like b- fucking box helmets <laughs> uh, on SoundCloud. Uh, you can pull it up on SoundCloud. You can pull it up on Google. I doubt there's anything on Google. Well, if like I pull it up handful. on Google, we're gonna be watching some gangbang videos. <laughs> if you spell it with these, it might <laughs> maybe gangbang DJ. I don't g-vung know. Ba- um, g-vung b- g-vung b- yeah. Bung 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 bung. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna. Pull oh, it. is it bang or bung 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 bung? Anything? Yeah. Go to images. Let's see if there's anything right there. Oh boy. Oh wow! Um, Surprisingly, no, no gangbangs. No gangbangs. That's actually kind of disappointing. I um, think I think you have the uh, safety search on right now. Oh, okay, yeah, you might have to just look it's on SoundCloud or, or Facebook, you know. But um, yeah, we had we had these fucking back road white trash engineering's that we did. We just literally drilled a skateboard helmet into a box, a cardboard box. That's awesome. <laughs> it was funny as a helmet, as a helmet, and like we cut out the eyes and we did like car tint. As like the eyes, so like that it was strapped on. People thought we just literally had a box on our head. It's like no, this is a helmet. No, I gotta see that. <laughs> <laughs> God, like I said, either look it up on SoundCloud or Facebook and probably come up. But what what sparked this idea to do this, man? Um, d- to just do the Gengar thing yeah. strictly came from uh, I was doing it. I got a show offer for a time I wouldn't have normally taken. They're like, yeah, you know, someone dropped off and they're asking if you want to do it. I know you wouldn't normally do this one. And I was like. Well, yeah, let's do it. And they're like, okay, well, maybe we'll call it like a sunset set. And I'm like, everybody does a sunset set. And it's never at sunset. It's never quite at sunset. It's either right before sunset or it's nighttime. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I was like, all right, uh, 
kind of and then and then I was just like kind of like one of those moments where you're like, well, let's make a new thing. You know, we'll do a a ghastly presents, and then I'll do something that's totally different from like my sets that I've been doing for almost like nine years, eight years at that time. I've been doing the same kind of like. You know, there's melodic, there's bass house, there's dubstep once in a while and just kind of like fucking around and just make something that was just one thing, you know, because I've always felt like Gasly as a project has always been multifaceted. Um, and I've just wanted, I was like, well, what? I'm going to take my hand at this. I'm just going to try to make an idea that's just one thing. And so I've, I mixed uh, dubstep with video games and monsters and metal music and there it was. And I was like, oh, those are all the things that I like, you know, and just put them all into one. And so you're like, let me go do a fucking tour. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, that was really fun. I, I don't want to just do one. And then just kept going with it and kept on like finding more and more things that I liked about it. Like, and then I started seeing this story of like, it's a video game that you're going to play and that you're affecting it by voting as an audience and all that shit. And I was like, that now I'm like seeing this become an idea Whereas with Gasly, it was always just who I am. Like, this is just who I am. This is what I like right now. This is what I'm making right now. Things like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how much, like, where's all the focus right now? Like, I know you did the tour. I imagine at that time it was all there. But, like, I mean, where are you trying to take it? To the moon, baby. <laughs> like Let's anything. go, dude. Hell like yeah. Anything. God, you know? like I said, look it up on Facebook if you want is actual pictures. No, that is it. But we have cum coming out of our eyes. That's an animation <laughs> thing. Oh my god. If you notice, it's jizz. But uh we wore like black morph suits. Dude, you guys are so on. Well, brand. you know, there's like the deep, dark, and dangerous. We were deep, dark, and sexual. Dang. So like that was our thing. What 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 city were you in? We were in fuck me. Uh, it's either Jackson or New Orleans at that time. Jackson, Mississippi or New Orleans. And like I said, you're gonna look it up on Facebook to yeah. find actual pictures. Oh, but, oh okay. Yeah, yeah but like you. we wore like black morph suits. We had like you know fucking cups. We'd be like um, hashtag bulge for Jesus. You know what I mean? We were doing. We were having some fun with it. it <laughs> That's wild, bro. Yeah. So were you uh, applying the cum every night? Oh no, or? that was just in the pictures. But like we would have like inflatable dicks or like yeah. dildos that we'd throw in the crowd, and we talk in a vocoder. Yeah. We said we were from Area 69, which made no fucking sense, nice. but it's still fun. Nice. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's all tied together. Yeah, it was right? all fun, dude. Yeah. We were, we're just fucking, <laughs> we're just horny dudes. We were, we were so horny. So we started a project called Gang Bang. Gavung <laughs> bavung. That's so funny. That is so funny, man. So, like, how do you allocate the time, then? Like, between, like, gasoline Gengar stuff? Whatever I'm feeling. I love it. Yeah, I'm but, still writing tons and tons of different styles of music, but I just don't, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm fi I want it. That's one thing I don't like about having such professional approaches towards everything is I would, I miss the days before all this where as soon as I was done with something, just upload it. Done. Oh, you know? dude, that sounds fun. It was so great. <laughs> like, I'm, like, the amount of music that, you know, I'm sure all artists like yourself and myself were all just sitting on such a mountain of songs. Yeah. And like, I even have a whole other project with a whole album written for it with like 75 demos with it. But it's, it's me and my friend Kevin doing guitar and piano and like mixing electronic into it. It's called Boshma. I'm going to put it out one day. And, uh, it's a cool name. Thank you. And, and it's That's not uh, a Pokemon name either. It's not a Pokemon name. Yeah. In, in fact, it comes from, uh, my dad's best friend. His name's Henry, Henry Boshma. Um, and, uh, he's kind of an invincible man. I'm good right now. Right on cow. Yeah. He, all, one. He's, he weighs like 700 pounds and, uh, he does nothing but like, you know, get drunk and fuck hookers. It's like his thing. Sounds like my stepbrother <laughs> yeah. minus the he, 700 he pounds. Has, <laughs> he has, <laughs> he's, and, and, and he's been, uh, like there was one time he got shot by a pimp and he unloaded into his stomach because he's so big. It didn't even touch any of his vital organs. Wow. He just fucking just, he is fine. Bro, he just he blew really hard, and the bullets just, shot back at him. Literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> just Majin and, and I'm like, dude, Boshma, that, that is, that's the name for that's, sure. That's pretty yeah. legendary. <laughs> yeah, my brother loves hookers, but that's here or there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, make money how you got. I guess so. Dude. Those type of people are wild, dude. Like, you're talking about a wild card in the group? Which Those, one? The dudes who get drunk and fuck hookers. Oh, You yeah. go out with the night with them, dude. It's going to be fun, A, and also, B, someone's got your back, dog, because those dudes are like, oh, I'll fucking kill somebody. Yeah. 
I mean, if they're willing to, uh, you know, go to Mexico and get whatever hookers they can, then uh, they're probably also willing to commit murder. Well, Mexico's Maybe. the safe bet, but when you're in, like, Des Moines, <laughs> Iowa, then it's getting risky. Is that right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, Mitch, I think they may have deactivated that account because I see where you tagged them in a post, and it's not blue. All right, man, dude, fucking the world's going to hell, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook got too woke for gangbang, dude. <laughs> Gang bang was not allowed. No, nah, dude, we wouldn't make it in today's climate. <laughs> no, I, don't, I, 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 don't, I have a strong feeling you're correct about yeah, that. We wouldn't, we wouldn't get anywhere. <laughs> We'd just be in trouble all the time. Oh. <laughs> so what were what was one of your songs called? Uh, stop fucking my daughter. It was uh one of uh it was you know Liam Neeson and Taken. <laughs> we sampled that. And we called it Stop Fucking My Daughter. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking stupid. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. <laughs> I don't think about it, but that's funny. Yeah. It is funny. I mean, you're, anything Liam Neeson re related is usually. <laughs> well, we just took Liam Neeson and made it sound like he was talking about someone to stop fucking his daughter. <laughs> If you let my daughter go, if you let her go, that'll be the end of it. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you, and I will fuck you. <laughs> and that's the drop, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm so sorry, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm geeked up about it. I haven't, I haven't thought about it in a while, but it's just funny. When did you guys disband? Oh, dude, fucking like 2018, maybe. 2017. 2017, 2018. Surprised you lasted that long. Well, I mean, it's a different time then, dude. Yeah, yeah. You know? Slightly, slightly. Ah, definitely a different time, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can get away with saying some wild shit a little bit more, in the name of fun. Mm. In the name of fun. But um, dude, you're fucking ripped now, dog. <laughs> I appreciate it. Nah, I got a, I got a long way to go. You're ripped, dude. You nah, fucking thanks. got up on it. You're like. I'm running. You, you're like I'm fucking running. If you're not running, you're a bitch. You didn't say these things, but it's like that's that's how I felt. That's how I felt. <laughs> so that's kind of why I, I I still do it, but I don't post about it as much, uh, just because that was a thing, right? Dude, like, you need to be like, the EDM David Goggins. That's exactly where it started going, and I'm like, I'm not trying to be David Goggins here, you know. I'm I when I saw some people reach out, they're like, dude, you're inspiring me to blah blah blah. Great, cool, awesome, very happy about that. But I don't. I don't think that's my purpose. I don't think. I, like I'm happy to inspire people, but you know, I'm just. I'm just gonna do it for me now. Every once in a while, casual update. Yeah, yeah. Casual, casual update. Like, Look at my fucking forearms. <laughs> <laughs> you see these fucking delts, dude. <laughs> and let's go. Yeah, dude. Yeah. How? I mean, like, it seemed like for a bit that's just like you were just like I'm. I was like, fuck, Gasly's getting fucking ripped. It 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 helps. Put your shit on the back, back on the right track, man. Like, oh, dude, yeah, working nothing, out is the best. Nothing else comes close. And after, and it, I, I had tried all kinds of stuff. You know, I had tried the the therapy and the uh, the things and the blah blahs and all the other things that they say help. You know, and nothing comes close to just getting the fuck up and just doing something. Like nothing will ever come as close because that's like you defeating it in a small way already. You know what I mean? Whatever it is you're dealing with. So that's where I was coming from on that. And then I was just like, holy fuck, this is really working. Yeah, so you so, got into it to kind of like combat like somewhat mental health stuff? Sure, yeah. I yeah. mean, any kind of uh, any kind of anxiety that I was going through, I found it was much easier to facilitate in my life and like filter out through physical activity. It just made the most sense. Especially when you get swole, you're yeah. not as anxious when you're like, I yeah, could beat exactly. the fuck out of you, dude. That's the thing. <laughs> you start developing that rapport with yourself. The and confidence, like, like, dude. Fuck yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, like I, yeah. I can do shit that I thought I couldn't. You know? Hell it's, yeah. And when you when you see that once, then you're you're like, well, then where else can I do that? You know? Yeah. Yeah, man. Do you feel like you're an anxious person? Um, if I don't take care of myself mentally and physically and spiritually, it eventually will slowly shift towards that direction. It's kind of like uh, doing a, a balancing act. You have to you have to look at what your what kind of food you're eating. How late are you going to sleep? And how much are you moving? And all these things. Are you doing the most you can to get where you want to be? Blah blah blah. And if you're not, and you're aware of those things, then subconsciously you're going to start picking on yourself, and then you start to sway a little bit, and then you you try to make up for that anxiety by 
blocking it out with something like Netflix or going out and partying because you don't want to deal with the reality of what your brain is trying to tell you about your life. Mm. And then it slowly starts to sway, and then it's up to you. You're going to either tumble and fall and then realize you need to get back up, or you're going to notice it ahead of time, and then you're going to be like, okay, time to get back on my shit. Time to wake up, run, drink some water, read a book, no screens until noon, and when it is a screen, it's me producing and doing what I love versus, you know, just, you know, letting my uh, my solar plexus kind of choose. Okay, I'm going to start with a nicotine, uh, cell phone, uh, pain, drama, pain, drama. Uh, I'm going to take a nap and uh, wake up. Now I'm going to watch Netflix. And it's like, yeah, no wonder you're fucking depressed, you mm-hmm. know? Like, And so you just have to call yourself out on your own bullshit once in a while. What's the one thing you struggle with that's like, that's my fucking devil? You know what I mean? Um... That's a tough one because they all kind of they all kind of take waves. Like sometimes distraction distraction can be a bad one, um, and then sometimes sleeping in can can hold me back. Like I still fuck up one hundred percent. Like I'm not preaching, by the way. I'm just saying my experience, how I deal with all this shit that still happens. Uh, I'm still getting better every day at handling. You don't um, think you have like a devil on your shoulder where it's like it's we the same, all do, it's, bro. Well, it's the same devil, and that devil is a certain thing. Um. No, well, maybe chess. I would like play. I'd like chess. That's not a bad in, devil. That's how chess gets in the way of so much producing. Honestly, if I because at my current elo, like I I could have written so many songs, bro. Yeah, but at least you're challenging yourself yeah. mentally. It's not like a bad yeah. habit or anything. Is That's, it fucked up again? No. Okay, cool. At least it's not like a bad habit. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just like a. I mean, that's a mental game. I don't know how to play chess, but I've been talking to my girl. I'm like, we need to learn how. It seems like like fun. Her and I play a lot of Yahtzee and like little board games and shit like that. You I'm would like, love it. Yeah, chess um, sounds fun. I don't know how to do it, but it sounds fun. It's really good for your brain. I'm sure. Mm. And that'd be a good devil on a shoulder to have. My devil is porn. I'm mm. off that motherfucker, but like it's, it's on my shoulder all the time where I'm like, oh, I'm going to look at it. Gnarly, yeah. It's rough. Yeah, I, I, I feel you on that. I, I don't watch this stuff anymore. Haven't for maybe nine or something months. Uh, once once you, once I uh, fell for uh, Jess, it was just like, it was off the table. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely having an old lady helps, man. I know mean, mine definitely helps, but like I've been off of it for like two years. But nice, not to say that I haven't had slip-ups here or there, dude. Sure. I'm fucking trying to find the football game, and I'm clicking the, you know, it's a legal stream, so you click it, and there's a pop-up, and there's Kim Possible with their tits out. Yeah. You're like, fuck! <laughs> I've always wanted to see Kim. With the, I wanted to see them titties. <laughs> I was going to see Kim titties. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I, I know what you mean because everything's so hypersexualized on the internet, you know, and you open up your phone, you're you're literally a thumb scroll away from that temptation. I totally get that, but, you know, it all comes down to you. It all comes down to you. And, like, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with, like, if, if you are, like, if you're tr- not tr- worried about it, if you're not worried about your masturbation, then fucking ignore this whole portion, right? Yeah. But if you think that maybe you should cut back a little bit, you know, because it does uh, rewire your brain. Yeah. If you do it a lot, a lot, like, you start associating some really dark stuff with one of the most important ways humans can connect, right? And it starts devaluing in a lot of ways. It makes things, it can be a very, very dark rabbit hole if you let yourself go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And so I think that's something to be aware of. And uh, that's that's a p- big part of why, you know, like anything that is addictive has layers of hell. Anything mm-hmm. that's addictive has layers of hell. Dude, and, I, I definitely think it rewired wired my brain. I wouldn't piss. even be fucking horny. I'd just be bored. And I'm just <laughs> scrolling on Pornhub. I'm not even jerking off. I'm just looking at it. Totally. That ain't healthy. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, even... uh. There's this book about how um, some of the wealthiest people in the world, one thing that they like to do is uh, while they're having sex, they manifest their reality. And like they're, they get, and, and I don't know how wait, wait, they're, they're mad. I say the Pledge of Allegiance, I'm dude. telling you, I'm telling you, because <laughs> it's such a, it's such a big vibration. Having sex is a huge vibration. We always, we hear the phrase, <laughs> it's just sex. And, and I, I think it's way more, I think it's like literally souls intertwining and altering timelines. You know, it really can be. And so, and these uh, multimillionaires clearly believe it It does. So, so much so that they manifest their realities while having sex because it's such a powerful vibration. So if you're feeling that vibration of sexuality and it's just you covered in like Cheeto dust and video games <laughs> and holed up in your apartment watching someone else get lucky, 
I don't know, man. I don't Ugh. know if you want to do that too much. I feel like that's going to rewire your brain. I like that, dude. Next time I take my girl to Pound Town, I'm going to be fucking thinking about me selling out Red Rocks. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> this Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> December 7th, Mission Ballroom. God damn it. <laughs> Buy some tickets. <laughs> What'd you say, baby? <laughs> What'd you say last Dude, night? I'll start, uh, I legit will start saying the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's a, it's a distraction to not come. Yeah, yeah. Next time you're trying not to come, <laughs> fellas out there, you're trying not to come, dude, fucking look somewhere in the room, fucking put one hand over your fucking heart and start saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I do Spoken it. like a man who doesn't love America, I come when I say the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> 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 Every time, boy. That's incredible, man. That's awesome. That's incredible. <laughs> Fuck, I had another question. Oh, yeah, you said something a second ago, and I kind of held on to it. You were like mental, physical, spiritual. Mm. You a spiritual guy? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think we're all spiritual. I think that there's like all kinds of things going on in the air that we can't see, like vibrations um, and, you know, have you ever like been in a room with one of your friends and you're like, is something wrong, man? But he's acting totally normal. You could just tell something's wrong with them without them ever saying a word and trying their best to fake it. Like, I think that that's because we can feel something that we can't see. What is it? Like, the eye can only see how much of the entire color spectrum. I think it's somewhere in the ballpark of, like, 5% of the of the true color spectrum. Damn, of so we reality. might be black, dog. <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that one. Shit killed me. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, dude? We can't tell. <laughs> he, did, he wasn't going for the death. I just gave it to him. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. We have to keep uh, that. That is too funny. That is funny. Oh, yeah. That was good. <laughs> what, what, what was he about to look up? <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm, I like I spaced out. Uh, oh yeah, oh, how, how much? How much can I see of the color spectrum? <laughs> Is this live, by the way? No, hell no, <laughs> no. hell no, dude. We we no, uh, we would not. Hilarious. Um, <laughs> humans can see around one million different colors. Um, He's talking about like the percentage of like the color wheel, like what all. Yeah, what I know what he's talking see. about, but I don't know uh, how to word it. Yeah. Mm. What's the percentage that eyes can see? What's the percentage of colors that eyes can see? Something like that. Yeah, I feel like yeah. that might be because it's like it. when they tell you, uh, they're like, "Yeah, butterflies can see thirteen colors we can't." Like, how the fuck did you figure that out? How do they know? How could you figure out that? A, like, w w how do you weigh that? Yeah, how the fuck? How do you, how do you even get to a but butterfly's eye? They're so yeah. small. Exactly. I don't know, man. Thirteen colors. I think that's just so, how some guy feels. It's kind of like the weather. It's just some guys. I feel like they they see more than us. We can't see the ultraviolet spectrum or the infrared spectrum. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Yeah, so right there on that graph right there, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You see those gray bars? That's all uh, light that we can't see. Yeah, so uh, I have the number here. about the little, sp the little spot right there, that's what all we can see. It's about 0.0035%. You're killing it today. Holy you are shit. Yeah, wow. thanks for doing Kyle's job. Yeah, seriously. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, appreciate you, Jess. <laughs> seriously, I was struggling. <laughs> I know, dude. I know. I did, it's a weird one to look up. Fuck, dude. With that being said, like, holy shit at the amount of colors that are out there that we don't even know. Right, right. And a lot of them occur in vibration. They're vibrational colors that we can't see. Like, uh... You know how you can, if you do DMT and you look at your walls, there's like this grid, this like energetic grid. And like sometimes you'll see colors that you're like, what even is that? I feel like that's our brain opening up to some of what exists. So I definitely, I definitely feel like uh, spirituality is, is not a if, but a is 100%. Yeah, dude. I mean, I wonder if DMT makes us like see all those colors more. I've done mm. DMT. Yeah. Fucking weed might make that do that might do that to me, brother. I might see the paint go wet again. You know what I mean? Like I get <laughs> fucked up on some weed. Mm. But um, yeah, no, I heard you say spiritual. I was like, ooh, I want to ask about that because like as I've gotten older, definitely become more spiritual, more mm -hmm. religious. Like I grew up in the Bible Belt, but I was like, didn't fuck with it that much. But all you know, like I'm a, I pray almost every day now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like and I'm very blessed in life. That's and, beautiful, man. And I feel it yeah. all around. 
And um, and I think prayer as an as an act is just it's critical. I think it's critical whether you feel like it doesn't for and for anyone who like doesn't believe in like God or whatever, like even, even if you just believe in, in like yourself, <laughs> you know, or, you know, just putting that intention of like, I got this, show me the way out of this, or thank you for, and being thankful for what you do have. Like, that's huge, dude. That'll, that'll like, that'll help you with your mental at all times. Mm. And, uh, therefore make the world a little bit better. Cause we all want to make the world better. Start with yourself is like, right. I feel like we all st start to, uh, realize that as we get older. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and this is a great segue, and Kyle brought it up to remind me, man, we had Tate on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we were talking about your you and his trip yeah, to go man. do some ayahuasca. Yeah, man. Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, his story was just profound. It was amazing. Yeah. I mean, how was that? Was that your first time doing it? And what was that oh, experience yeah. like for you? Dude, happy to share that. Is uh, um, I'll, and I'll preface the whole story by saying that ayahuasca is – in my opinion, the most important uh, uh, medicine for mental health ever. Uh, I, I have a hard time imagining someone who is suicidal, who's never done ayahuasca, doing a couple of those rituals and still considering it. I really, and so um, we, me and Jessica were actually watching the movie, what's it called? What was it called? Monkey Man. And there's a scene in Monkey Man um, where he like does this uh, magical a uh, plant from a tree it's some kind of like dust and she brings up she's like i want to do ayahuasca and i was like you know what i've never done it i've always wanted to but never had the right person timing or place and i was like yeah we should and we tried to reach out to a bunch of treatment centers none of them were responding but we had the show at paradise blue where we uh where we were going the next couple days so we went there two days later and while we were there then take randomly i don't know how it came up but they're like oh yeah me and my manager are gonna go and do ayahuasca in colombia and we're just like what are the fucking odds like i've never been invited to do ayahuasca in my entire life well, most people haven't I yeah mean, most yeah. right yeah. right like most people never do right and yeah then, bro you want to get together watch the game and do some ayahuasca <laughs> <laughs> Ayahuasca and Patriots, yeah. bro. That, that's that's a bit hectic. Dude, yeah, yeah I do. I do ayahuasca. Watch the Saints game. And I'm like, dude, I actually do love Derek Carr. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry for no, no. I don't care. I don't mind it in the slightest. I can riff. It's not a problem. Gotcha. Um, but uh, the the fact that he came up and offered that to us literally two days after we had decided that we wanted to do it was like kind of a wink from the universe. And I was like, all right, we're doing this for sure. And we go out there. Columbia is beautiful. Um, uh, gorgeous, gorgeous uh, land. And we're, we're just, we take this car. Uh, his manager had rented a car. And the roads that we had to go up were so slick. Like it, was, it had been raining and it was like barely paved. And the car wasn't all that tough with the four of us in it. So we had to get out and like push it up this hill. And it just felt like we were being tested. Like, how much do you really want this? And it was, which is, we would come to find is a big part of ayahuasca is the pain. Um, and so I'm going to fast forward. We, we get through all that nonsense and we're there. And uh, we look at the grounds and it's just, uh, it's very, very, very humble. You're not sleeping on a mattress. There's not these drapes and these friendly gurus or anything like that, like they have in uh, like uh, Malibu and stuff like that. Um, it's just a fucking wooden pallet next to a fireplace. There's a fucking wolf walking around. A legit wolf? A legit wolf walking oh, around. Oh, shit. Just and, like, is it yeah. his homie? There's a wolf and then like a half wolf. Like they had, they, they were like really hectic and they were just homies. They're There's, homies. Yeah, they're, they're, they were owned and they lived there. Um, and so the, the shaman sits across from us like we are right now and we're in a circle table and then we're starting to sign these papers in Spanish, you know, just no idea what these say. And so he's telling us what they say. And he says something along the lines of, and obviously in Spanish, and then it was translated to us from John uh, Tate's manager. And he's like, uh, so you're going to experience dying and you're going to feel like you're dying. And also it's very important that you sign this part because it says, if you go insane, he has the right to tie you up to a tree. And I'm like, what the fuck are we signing up for? 
Like, this guy's going to tie me to a tree because I think I'm dying. He's like, yeah, also you're going to start, there's a chance that you could start fearing everyone around you and thinking that they were attacking you. And I'm like, dude, this is really gnarly, but we're already fucking here. So um, they we, we signed the papers and handed them off. And uh, and he gives us the ayahuasca, and it's in this tiny little plastic cup. It's not like some beautiful, like, in my mind, I'm like, oh, it's going to be like a ceremonial cup. And it's like, no, it's like a fucking Dixie cup. Just like, here's your ayahuasca. Like, everything's so humble. We take it, and then we are handed, like, this blanket that's just a little too small and a pillow that is extremely thin. And we just go, and we lay there, and he's like, and, and the whole point is that everyone's separated. You can't be near each other because it's not supposed to be a group experience. You're in the same hospital is kind of the idea. Um, and so for me, it didn't hit me the first time. I all, I'm sitting there and I'm waiting for it and I'm starting to get kind of like weird feelings. But then I hear Tate. It's like, ah, ah, he didn't share ah. that part, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he started yelling. Is everyone fucking yelling or is it just Tate? No, it's not just Tate. There's oh, damn it. People. I wanted it to be just Tate. No, no, no. no. <laughs> people get terrified. People get I'm terrified. I'm sure. Fuck. And so Tate was like hollering. He was like, oh my God. He's like, I heard him multiple times. He said something like, uh, Dude, I'm not even a human, bro. I'm not even a human. <laughs> if so, you're not fucked up, I would have been fucking with him. I what are you, dude? Exactly. Lizard well, person. I was waiting for it to hit me. I'm sitting there. I'm like, man, I want I want that. You know, I want to feel that. That sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because what? that's the whole point. That's yeah, the whole okay, point. You're okay. supposed to. True, true, true. It's supposed to be awful. That's something that I kept reading. It's supposed to be awful. And then at the end of it is this like golden horizon. And so I heard him going through hell and I'm like, fuck man, I'm still on earth. And, um, so Tate's like, next thing I know, Tate's like, uh, shirtless. I think he was naked at one point, just like laying in the grass and just laying in the sun and just like clearly becoming a new human right in front of me. Apparently I'm sure he br told you on the, uh, on the pod when he was here, how, how his ankle was fixed. Yeah. Yeah. He did. He told me he was Crazy. rolling around the ground too. How his foot was fixed. Yeah. He was rolling around. Yeah. And I just would look up, and I'm like, this is hilarious. And then the shaman comes back, and then I finally was like, yes, I need another dose. Like, it's, it's not hitting me. And uh, it's Your this, tolerance for ayahuasca, I, brother. <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. But the second one definitely, definitely hit. And um, so, I, I'm like, by the way, it's like the most beautiful music going on. Like, um, one of the songs that they play is the Western song from Kill Bill. Uh, it's, it's um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, something like no, that's, that, the, that's, 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 that's the jingle. Um, no, it's it, Inyo Mori Mor Maricon, and uh, oh, sorry, that might that might be it. Anyway, they're playing that song and and multiple others. They're just really beautiful music, and they come around with these fans and they shake these fans. The fans are supposed to fan the demons away and what have you. And then uh, they bring all these spritz, and there's a fire pit, and then the and then I start to like start to feel the vibe, and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, something's happening here, and like uh, my eyes are shut, and I'm just laying there, and then I see this giant fucking serpent, this big snake, just comes up right to my face, and just like is staring me down, and it's like terrifying, it's just staring at me, Whoa. and then it and then it just goes like this, it goes remember this and just pulls up this really fucked up memory. I had completely forgotten. I had totally forgotten about it. I was like, Oh my God, I totally forgot about that. And it was like, remember how you reacted in that? And I was like, Oh my God. And it's like, own it, own it right now. Like getting me to own how I fucked up in fucked up situations. It was so crazy. And then there was like, like it was bringing up stuff from like my childhood. And I, I, I had completely memory hold, which is like where like, all of this was coming from a lot of it was like childhood stuff that I had totally forgot. And, and I'm just like, and I start to feel this pain in me. I'm like, Oh God, it's like, like, I'm like, like I'm dying, like I'm dying. And it, and I feel, and in my mind's eye, uh, this, 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 so the snake is guiding me on this journey and it shows me like, do you see this? And there's like this wall of like, uh, like worms and gears that are broken and like this like goo just dripping out of this wall. I'm like, what the fuck is that? And it's like, this is the inside of your soul. 
this is something you've been carrying with you for a long time. Oh my god! And and all the all this is being spoken audibly in my head. Like it's are you speaking. talking back to it out loud or is it just also like in your I'm, head? I'm not sure. Got you. Um, probably mostly. In Jess my head, was he? He was quiet. Got okay. You. He and, wasn't uh, screaming like yeah. Tate. <laughs> yeah, Tate's such a bitch, dude. I'm joking. <laughs> Bro, I don't know. You meet inter interdimensional demons, you're gonna get scared. I'm sure, sure dude. I, I, I'd probably be. I'd probably be. <laughs> I'd be screaming like a girl, dude. I'd be screaming like a girl. Yeah. Like tell nobody about this. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, he owned it. He owned that shit. I'm that was, sure. That I mean, what, awesome. that's all you can do yeah. at that point. She said and, oh, yeah. they, uh, they were all crying. Yeah. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's something that uh, that is also really really cool about. It. So, blah blah blah. While I'm looking at this wall of my soul, it tells me just keep your attention on it. Just keep your attention on it, and we're gonna cleanse you. And uh, and it was always a we, which I, I found weird. So it was like, and then right here where I was feeling pain, I started to feel what I can only describe as just this lightness, just zero pain, light, and just peace. And I'm like. Oh, that wasn't something. And then it goes, remember this fucked up memory? <laughs> <laughs> Every time you're like, oh, we're getting yeah, through yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, And it starts you over. And then I'm going through pain all over again. Similar cycle, showing me these fucked up machines in my body and then fixing them and then like screwing everything where it's supposed to be and then feeling lightness there. And it was just so fucking bizarre. And I couldn't help myself. I started fucking just bawling. And I started thinking about anyone who had done me wrong, anyone who I had done wrong, all the people from like my childhood all the way to now who have ever. And then remembering that is more important than anything right now to just accept it and forgive it and to breathe. And that's what I just kept doing. I accept that all that happened. I forgive that all that happened. And I'm just going to breathe. And that was just like hitting over and over and over and then I like, like I start to feel this piece in my body and then there's one more big like fight and then it that's when it makes you puke and like as I'm crying my eyes out I'm like oh god I can't hold it any longer and just start hor just start puking all over the fucking ground and like it was awful because it tastes so fucking bad so when it's coming back up it's so much worse so it causes you to keep puking Ugh. and you just fully purge and in that moment i really felt like all of these dark entities or whatever you want to call them negative emotions demons. traumas demons all of them were just pouring out and and then like after that dude the music started to change and then i just felt this like what i can only describe is like what it would feel like to be hugged by an angel mm -hmm. and it was just like i was okay with everything and i had and there was like this beauty about everything again that i had i had felt like i forgotten and um it was it was a huge huge step uh in the direction of where i am right now i love my life so much right now and i'm so blessed and i have so many gifts right now and i really do attribute that to a massive shift in my mental that came from that day absolutely whenever were you still tripping at the point where like, you know, you said you like threw up and you just felt this angel around you. Is that trip over or no. like, okay, so you're still tripping, but it's just a beautiful it's the part. Best part. Thank God. It's the best part. <laughs> I was going to say, thank and God. It, and it lasts, it lasts, that part lasts for like a couple hours. Yeah. Um, it's not like intense and visual, um, but it's, it's nice. It's very, Are very you nice. here? Yeah. You're here when it's all yeah, going, yeah. whenever it's, this is all happening. You're still like realizing where you're at during the painful part. Yes, mm, kind of. Yeah, your eyes are shut the whole time. That's oh wow! What, that's what they tell you to do. Is like it all happens in your mind. Wow. Um, but every once in a while, because you purge in all directions, so you, I'd have to get Were up to out, out the front. I had and to the go back. and take a shit multiple oh. fucking times. Did you shit yourself. No, I didn't. Thank they, God. They yeah. they said that that does happen. That a lot of people do end up shitting their pants. I would do. I like part of me wants really wants to do it, especially after hearing Tate talk about it and like really looking into it. I'm like, there's a big part of me that wants to do it. The only thing I'm like, I don't want to shit myself. That's the thing. You you, <laughs> I'm an adult. Yeah, but you know, even though I did shit myself a couple of weeks ago, so like I can probably. <laughs> so do that's it. off the list. Yeah, that's I could probably do it. <laughs> that's off the list of excuses. Yeah. Right there. So anyway, <laughs> continue. I'm sorry. No, no, you're good, man. I'd I'd highly recommend it. I think uh, I think anyone could do it once because it's not it's not something you want to do multiple I mean, I, times. I did do, you do it once. once. Exactly. I blast I blast it off once. It's the only time I've and ever done it. And you, it's not habit forming. It's not addictive. And all and it's medicine. It's not. I that's why they. Uh, they push that word a lot more. They're like, it's not a drug. 
Like mushrooms are drugs because you can go in both directions and it can be all kinds of things. This has one specific intention. And so they consider it a men- medicine because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. And so you definitely feel a lot better after it. Yeah, man. Man. I think it's, uh, what's it, 0.05% of the population has ever done ayahuasca. Oh, um, you want to fact check it? 0.05. I love yeah. that I'm getting fact checked. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure we're correct on this program. No, absolutely. <laughs> I don't want to be part of the fake news, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll put it on the screen for um, you as I search for it. But, um, man, what we're like. And the reason I said the percentage is because of how many people we know who do, uh, like, I tried depression pills in the past. It made me want to kill myself. So I don't see how that was helping. You and, and was, Tate are the only months, people I've talked to. Months and months and months of doing them, it doesn't fucking help. But if you uh, if you do ayahuasca once, suddenly yeah, you it's like it jam packs all the pain into one uh, one purge, and then it's over. And then like you know you have to remember it's not a permanent fix, but it is a huge step in the right direction. Yeah, man. I mean, you and Tate are the only people I've talked to that have done it. Point zero. <laughs> 0. 0.37. So, so about 600. Yeah, I was. I was 600,000 people in the world. I was exaggerating a little bit. So, oh, wait. Yeah. 0.5% of the population in the U.S. have oh, tried wow. ayahuasca. I mean, it sounds incredible. It sounds scary as fuck. Yeah. You have to, you know, you're really just going through these demons that you didn't even know you had. Like, yeah. I know I have some demons in me. I know there's some things yeah. I've done in my life that I'm not proud of. Everybody has that. Everybody. Everybody's done fucked there's up shit. There's not a single person no. who can say. They don't have any regrets. We've, or, we've been pieces of shit at some point and somewhere, and it's a learning up. experience. Absolutely. But the fact that there's things that you don't even remember, yeah. especially from your childhood, I, that that would be the scariest part for me. Like I yeah. know what, like thinking you that know, was, thinking you know what you're about to face. They're like, all right, yeah, those I I, I know because I think about this every once in a while, especially so when I'm high on marijuana about this one thing I did. But then you're like, oh shit, <laughs> damn, dude, I didn't get that Christmas present and I was upset. Yeah. No, it actually will bring up some, like, what you probably thought were just vague, nonsensical things, but they actually bothered you deep down. (sighs) (laughs) Fuck. I want to do it. Like, after talking, like, after Tate was telling me his experience, like, it really was like, man, I think I want to go do this. I feel like that. I I feel like I carry a lot of things I don't even realize I carry, Mm -hmm. you know? And you felt, like, just kind of weightless after that. I don't know. Do you feel like a new person? Yeah. Totally. Man. Like Like a completely new human. What was the biggest lesson other than... Other than accept, forgive, and breathe, what was the biggest lesson you took from it? Oh, um, that was honestly the biggest one. You already said it was the like when the more you forgive, the more you accept, and the more you just like remember to fucking breathe, like life just automatically becomes better because that's the that's the lesson that I kept on learning. Like if like if, what is the what is the phrase if uh, if you hate someone that's like putting uh it's like putting a rock in their shoe and expecting a rock in your shoe and expecting them to feel the pain mm. right and so when you Damn, forgive that's a good saying i don't know if i've forgive, ever heard that when you forgive you take the rock out of your shoe and Fuck. you just fucking live your life that's and beautiful. just let it go you know fucking beautiful thanks man you are too thanks buddy I'm just saying i'm working, <laughs> how crazy I'm would working it be? on my mullet I'm how crazy would it be it. if we made out right now <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, to get that slut cut going, boy. I'm working on it, man. I'm working on it. It's, it's got a ways to go. Jess, you like the slut cut on him? You want him to do it? Yeah, dude. It takes yeah. a confident man. He did ayahuasca. <laughs> he said, "I'm growing this shit out." <laughs> Actually, though, he, he <laughs> biggest lesson he took from ayahuasca, dude. I could rock this shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, man. Uh, it's just such a it's such a fascinating thing. Like like I said, you and Tate are the only people I've talked to about it. my like interest is just I'm just intrigued. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just uh, curious George over here about it. Totally. And um, man, it's kind of uh, he was telling me he was like I get why it's not legal because they do not the government does not want people on this because then you you just see all the fucked up things around. It works really well. Yeah, they're like you just become so like aware. Yeah. Of all the things around you. Yeah, you really do. And and h- even to the point that handling money kind of gives you a weird feeling. Oh, for man. For a second, you're like, really? This? Oh, dude. dude, I hate it when I'm on acid and I touch my wiener to pee, you know? Like, I can't even <sighs> I imagine know. on ayahuasca. <laughs> but, like, um, 
sorry, but like, <laughs> no, you, that's actually so real. And anyone who's ever done acid knows exactly what we're talking. Like, about. I don't even want to look at my wainer. The fuck is that? Yeah, oh, gross, what? dude. I can't believe people like this. <laughs> Me, but uh, fucking, uh, uh, what else was I gonna say? Um, man, I had a good question about it too, and I just fucking talking about dicks got my mind all fucked up. <laughs> yeah, but it'll do that. Yeah, it will, man. Um, fuck, fuck, oh my. It might come to me. We had a bunch of fan questions I wanted to get to. Sure. Before we do that, I got to pause to pee. Yeah, I'm in a- that too. Perfect. Right there with cool. that. Before you jump back in, can I ask, hey, did you ladies plan your, your neck jewelry today? Looks real cute. Oh, dude, that's oh, fun. You know, that's actually, exactly. <laughs> I'm wearing my sleep token hoodie. I thought I wanted to look metal as fuck. <laughs> How does sleep token have the most brutal font? And, and, it, like, and there's like, the so, most beautiful yeah, music like you've beautiful, ever heard. Yeah. God, it's the most beautiful <laughs> shit you've yeah. ever heard. It's there. I love that band. I know I know the people who listen to this podcast have heard me talk. I get roasted online. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For liking Sleep Token? Oh, well, just I, br- I brought it up like every podcast as <laughs> soon as I found girls. them. They're like, yeah, dude, you released a new song. Have you heard of Sleep Token? And I think that was like, yeah. I'll get like memes in my group page. Oh, so you're, now you are the meme. I am the meme, yeah. <laughs> I fucking love that band. But dude, yeah, what I was going to ask you, um, did you ever feel like at that point you were dying? On ayahuasca? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely felt like dying mm. um, at certain points. Not not nearly as terrifying, though, as uh, the time I did, like, uh, I did six hits of acid once to try and <laughs> hack Ableton because I figured that if I did six hits of acid, I would, like, see through the program. What the fuck? <laughs> Bro, how could you take even one and try to do Ableton? Dude, I did six. <laughs> I couldn't do one and sit down and try to Bro. figure out Ableton. <laughs> I'd be like, I don't want to look at you right Dude, now. It was, it was terrifying. I <laughs> lost it. I lost my fucking mind. Jesus um, Christ. I think I was, uh, yeah, I was watching virtual riot tutorials. <laughs> and like, and like, and I didn't start. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't start until um, <laughs> like the acid was kicking in proper. I'm like, all right, here we go. I had the, had the tutorial pulled up. And the first thing he says is, Okay, so for this track, uh, I decided I was going to use uh, Battery 4, and I'm like, well, fuck, I don't have Battery 4. So first thing I did was try to buy something. I tried to buy a VST, and anyone who's a producer knows how notoriously annoying buying VSTs can be for certain companies. Yeah. And I tried to buy Battery 4, and it went down this weird rabbit hole, and I started getting annoyed and frustrated, and I finally got all the right information in after like what felt like Four hours, but I'm sure it was like three minutes. And then um, as I hit purchase and process, this uh, this notification pops up and it says, um, do not close this window. We are currently scanning your 3D environment to make sure you are within the vicinity oh, no, of your credit not card. Oh, your 3D environment? And I was like, what the fuck does that mean? You know? <laughs> and, and I... <laughs> I <laughs> That's a mess. <laughs> and I fucking lost it, bro. I I, I actually cover. it's like take I, cover bro, now, bro. I came I came to the con- conclusion that I was being monitored, and I looked up at the camera on my laptop, and I was like, oh, I know what you're trying to do. I know what you're trying to do. And then I started like somehow connecting the because it was Obama who was president, and I started connecting Obama. To that, and I was like, Obama's watching me right now, dude. And, like, I go out into the living room where everyone else is sober and just chill, and I'm like, dude, you guys, Obama, Obama. Thanks, Obama. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, he's got a program. He's watching me. Damn, dude. He's scanning the room. Like I thought, It's fucked up. I'm still that way. (laughs) Obama's watching me right now. Dude, I lost my shit, man. And I'm gonna I'm gonna add one last detail to that story, and we can fucking move on to whatever. But um, I uh, I and so I started having this really really bad trip, and I was just like negative in every way. And so I was like, all right, I I need to go back in time. I have to go back. And so I figured if I sat on my floor and I just spun counterclockwise fast enough that I would end up at a time before I took that acid. <laughs> <laughs> And so, <laughs> bro, you aren't figuring out Ableton. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I'm telling music ain't happening, my guy. <laughs> like, Ableton's not happening. Yeah. How and, much time did you spend in Ableton? 
Dude, I, I'm, I'm not. So the reason I did it six times was because there was another time I did it where I, I did it five times. And that was when I wrote a song called LSD. And that song did really well for me. And I was like, all right, cool. Maybe I can, you know, strike, uh, strike gold twice on that one. And, that, and I just ended up in, in a pit of insanity. <laughs> and so I'm on the floor and I'm spinning counterclockwise as fast as I can. And I'm like, come on, come on, come on, come on. And then I like open my eyes ever so slightly just to like check and see if I'm in a different time. And I see what what happened is I see, I, I see this red thing and I kick this red thing. It was like a red cloth. And that's all that happened, right? Is I kicked my robe. But in my mind, I spun back to a time when someone was murdered in my room. And I was like, oh, God, oh, too far back, too far back. <laughs> <laughs> I kept going, bro. I kept going so much that my heel cut open and I started drawing a circle of blood around me. And that really sent me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey. Oh, my God, now, dude. Now there's blood on the floor and a, a circle, circle around circle. me. Yeah. Bro, <laughs> you took six sets of acid. You're like, fuck figuring out Ableton. I'm figuring out time travel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what I was thinking, dude. Yeah, you're actually, the, and then you're in the multiverse. Like, like, this is more important than music. <laughs> yeah, Thanos is outside. What the hell is going on? Yeah, man. That's hilarious. Well, I, I, would, I wouldn't recommend it. it it's... <laughs> <laughs> Man, I tried like um, I was seeing a bunch of people talk about microdose and mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. And so like I would try that like to w wake up in the morning. I did it for like a month where I was trying to microdose and work on music, but I was doing like psilocybin like liquid, and uh, I and <laughs> there'll be some mornings where I'm like, oh, it's 10 a.m. I'm tripping nuts. I don't know if I should do this anymore. <laughs> but, and I, that's the last time I've done it. That was it, huh? That was it. I've done like 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 mushrooms here and there. I haven't yeah. done. I've been off psychedelics for like a year and a half, yeah. and I love them. Yeah, I love them. I haven't done acid in like seven years, but like That's mushrooms fair. is. I love mushrooms. Mushrooms are just more trustworthy because it's made by the earth. You yeah, know? man. And I just <sighs> acid, I acid's always somebody had to make it. Yeah, I know. Just every time I do mushrooms, I'd always just end up calling my brother the other night and just say I love you, and he's like, "Is everything okay?" You yeah. know what I mean? Like I just always call like my like close family members or like people I don't have to talk to that's in a while. That's beautiful. Yeah, and I'm just like, hey. I, a, that's hey, a good side effect. I would I, it's an amazing side effect. I was like, I, I haven't talked to you in a while and I love you and I hope you're doing good. That's it's cool. just like, I would be texting everybody. It's like 6 a.m. or 5 a.m. They're like, dude, is everything okay? Yeah. <laughs> like, yes, dude. Everything's actually better than it's ever been right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. It's the best it's ever been. Oh, that's awesome. It's like Adderall, you know? Oh, I'm going to fucking focus today. And he's like, mom, dude. Really, just miss you. You know, I love you so much. I take it every day, so like, you know, I've been on it since I was a child. Oh, Adderall? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. 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 Since you were a kid, huh? Yeah. <laughs> this eight-year-old won't sit in his chair straight. Give him some drugs. Yeah, dude, they gave <laughs> That's it. That's wild. Not how a, how old were you when you started? I started taking like a ADD medicine. It was called Stratera when I was about in the fourth or fifth grade. And Stratera. It, yeah, it was the only non-stimulant. ADD, ADHD medicine, but they were also using it on people as like an antidepressant. Mm -hmm. So it fucked me up. My mom didn't want to put me on a like a stimulant. Right. So it really fucked me up. I was antisocial. I wasn't eating. Interesting. It made me very tired. And I'm like a very like social guy, like bouncing off the walls. It would, I was the complete opposite. And I got on Adderall when I was about a teenager. And uh, I'm 28 now. So like I'm, I've been on it ever since then. Right on. What's yep. your review? Rules, rules, <laughs> fucking rules. <laughs> and I don't take it ever, like I I take it just on weekdays. Yeah. Or like if I'm on vacation, I won't take it all vacation. I'll take it while I'm on the road. Yeah. I just How, take it on work days. My only question, because I I'll use Adderall once in a while, like um you know as as a little booster, but how do you fucking sleep? Like as someone who takes it every day since you were young, I I try it once every like week, maybe couple weeks, maybe more. And I can't fucking sleep. And it's a big reason why I would never take it a second day in a row is because it's like my eyes are on fire and I stayed up till 6 a.m. last night. Well, I already don't sleep even without it. Like I've always struggled uh, with that. I've actually been doing really good lately. That with might sleeping. be on account of taking nope. it since you were. No, it's not. Dude, like I, I could be off of it for two weeks and still, uh, still not be able to sleep. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I honestly, in the last, since I've moved to this house, I've been in this house for like a month, I've been sleeping great. I just beat my schmeat, you know, and I'm speaking. 
<laughs> I do on that one, bro. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> He's left-handed, so you're good. <laughs> yeah, 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 we're good. We're good. But, uh, yeah, I mean, sleeping's always been a problem. It's yeah. not because of the Adderall. I just can't sleep at night. Fair enough. Too and weed demons. makes it dude, weed makes it worse, brother. Yeah? Yeah. Because not only am I not sleeping, I'm also just hating myself. Yeah, I'm just sleeping. <laughs> I'm just thinking about fucking things I don't like about myself. <laughs> Man, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I hope I don't fuck that up. <laughs> I remember that one time when you fucked up that drum solo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's like what I'll be on, dude. Wait, has that happened to you? Yeah. Yeah, you fucked up a drum solo oh, yeah, in front of a live audience. For huh? sure. Tell yeah. me about that. Uh, dude, I fucked. I mean, I remember I was playing with this uh, band. I was about 19, and these guys were in their late 30s. And I was in a cover band. And uh, all of us were really good at the, our instruments. We are all fucking ballers. And I would get a drum solo every night. Yeah. And I would always crush. One night I just fucked up, and I was just like, Damn. I just stopped. Just stopped? I just stopped. I should have been a pro and pushed through and be like, oh, that was fucked up, but watch <sighs> this. But I, weird. um, yeah. How old were you? I was 19. Yeah. Yeah. Bummer, man. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. <laughs> I feel that. I I fully feel that. I've fucked up many times. Yeah. Um, When I was young and a couple times years ago, I haven't, I haven't fucked up in a long time, which I'm really proud of. Just cutting it on like getting fucked up before shows is a big part of that. And uh, just, you know, actually trying your best instead of just like, for instance, um, I, I got booked. One of my first gigs uh, was to do the final set after Bear Noise and Zomboy at um, Avalon in Los Angeles. So I had the I had the 4 a.m. slot. I was playing the latest set. I was just dealing with the drunkards who were still, you know, meandering about. And uh <laughs> fucking bear noise comes off. Um, and then I, t I go up to him. I'm like, hey, man, can you, like, tell everyone on the mic, like, hey, everyone, welcome Gastly to the stage. And he's like, okay. Like, I've I've never had anyone say that to me in my career so far, so it makes sense, like, why that probably weirded him out a little bit. And so he's like, sure, yeah. yeah. Hey, yo, make some noise for Gastly right now. And I was like, uh. No one knows who the fuck I am. I'm like, all right, this is my big moment for all, like, 186 of these people. And um, I go up. This and, is where I make it, dude. Yes, this is it. And I go up, and I I had never touched CDJs in my life. Oh, yeah. It was my first time oh, touching yeah. them. And I thought that I could just watch YouTube videos and, like, oh, yeah, let's play. There's a Q button for some reason, and you push up and down on the right part of the mixer. Okay, I think I got it. I go up and I press play and there's this big build up and people like starting to turn. It was like a Lion King intro and like all these people start to turn. They're like, "Okay. Okay." And then I go, "Yes! Yes!" And my hand comes down. Pause. <laughs> and then I I tried to and then I started the song over. Instead of just pressing play again, I started the song over. And I was like, "Oh, here we go." And this went on painfully train wrecking for about 35 minutes before the uh, the the club manager came up to me. He's like, hey, man, hey, we're, we're going to pack it in, bud. Hey, it's okay. Thank you for coming. You gave it your best, yeah, dude. You, you tr literally, like, almost like you would say to a kid who lost his softball game. Like, oh, no, it's okay, bud. You want to go know. get ice cream? Yeah, yeah <laughs> literally. <laughs> like, that. Just like, go home, go home. And I could have easily been like, I'm fucking done here. I'm, I'm clearly not cut out for this. But it just made me want to try harder, I guess. You know, so dude. fucking up isn't always a fuck up, dude. It's funny. I don't. I have never shared this in the podcast either. But my first time ever playing on CDJs, I had a big fuck up too. So I was doing uh, live drumming like on some MIDI pads when okay. I first started doing like a taboo. novation or I had um, MIDI fighter. Or I had a. It wasn't a Lesis. It was. Um, I have it in my fucking closet right here. Okay, but like I had a uh, MIDI drum, MIDI drums, and I was doing them, and I would take the drums out of my songs, and I would play them out, and it was cool. It was my first time on CDJs. I was always using a controller. Mm -hmm. Then next CDJ had the song queued up. I didn't know about the reverse. Mm. Yeah, like the reverse knob. That little knob, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like tab there. I'm sitting here trying to cue because I have to like, boom, like hit play really fast. And yeah. then right there at the on end, beat. like make, yeah. And it just ends. I'm just like, oh, uh, it's broken. <laughs> and the, the, the last DJ comes up and just. Yeah, so I felt like a total dork. Yeah, you feel like an idiot in that moment. But, yeah. but it makes you human, too. Yeah, dude. I mean, like, listen, I, I you know. say it. I treat it like Spider-Man. You remember yeah. in Spider-Man and uh in Family Guy where it's like everyone gets 
Everybody gets one. Tell them, Spider Man. Everybody gets one. Everybody gets one. That's what I say. Like, every DJ set, when a DJ walk off, like, oh, I fucked up. I said, hey, dude, everybody gets one. Yeah. I mean, we're not playing off yep. a laptop. It's not going to be perfect. We might yeah. fuck up. Yeah. Everybody gets one. And even if you do play off your laptop, there's all kinds of problems that could happen there. Everybody yeah. gets one, though. Yeah, but if you play with your laptop, you're a fucking pussy. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> playing. I'm playing. Gasly didn't say this. I did. <laughs> Come at me, bros. Yeah, but I was supposed to get really upset when you said it and be like, I won't stand for this, and then leave, right? That'd be great. You fucking pour beer out on me. <laughs> <laughs> we start fist fighting. Oh, my God, the content. Yeah, uh, that but- <laughs> actually could be fire. And that's where we start a whole uh, EDM wrestling federation. Just I've talked that. about it for years. Yeah. EDM fight night. Man. I want you- Kaiwachi versus Jansen so bad. That Oh, dude, Kaiwachi's going to win that. I sure. disagree. I, 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 I would... Jensen Jensen's in good shape, but I think he Kai's, trains though. Kai's, he trains fighting. Oh, he trains? I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Dude, so when yeah. you bring someone like that that in, like Henry Fong, for instance, anyone who's training, like they're gonna win. But also, it's not a size thing anymore. Jensen has this thing called built up ginger anger. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> gingers. You know what I mean? Like you ever met a gin- yeah. ginger that just has it inside of them? It's just at any moment, like he's just pissed off. Yeah. He has no soul. Yeah. It's just a built up gin- ginger anger. I don't mm. know if people know this, but gingers are angry. <laughs> and so you put this guy in a ring, it might be his ayahuasca. You know what I mean? <laughs> he might feel light after it. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, all right. I actually feel you on that because I met Carrot Top once, and I thought he was gonna explode. Bro, they're all I angry. I just, but well, that was the only one. That's the only ginger you've ever met. But <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like, <laughs> bro, gingers are crazy, and that's why I love them. Yeah, that's fair. I love, <laughs> <laughs> I love it like that, dude. Yeah. I'm telling you, every ginger I know, dude, they'll fucking kill somebody. So you fucking pay them to get in the ring, they're down, dude. They're gonna prevail especially if they're training for mma yeah like actually training so like i would love i want edm fight night so bad dude yeah but you you, the mma trainers have to be in their own category after that it comes down to uh weight and height i guess i I I don't know i feel like it's a little bit of like um level playing field because it's like jansen's like in shape and he can fight but if Kai Washi gets one hit one on him, hit. he's fucking dead. Uh, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. like a it's like a level. It's like a field. Spider-Man versus the Hulk type thing. Yeah. 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 So fair enough. That's fun. EDM fight night. Who would you want to see fight, dude? Man. You and Carnage? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. I love it, dude. I can't believe I thought of that. <laughs> I can't believe I fucking thought of that. Oh, that's, that's incredible. Uh, Diamante's cool, but fighting him, uh, I don't know, man. Who would you want to see in EDM fight night? I though, would uh, I would say um, like Excision Getter. Like That'd be fun. Excision and Getter would be interesting. Fucking awesome. Anybody's um, game, dude. I don't know who would win that one. Man. Honestly... I don't keep up on the beefs enough to where I can just riff it off the top like you. It's like Jansen and yeah, Kai Watchy don't have beef, but yeah, they're right. just both in f- top physical shape. It would shape. just be interesting to see. They're the main card. I'd like card. to see Zomboy versus Skrillex. Ooh, That'd yeah. That'd be good. Or yeah. maybe... Uh, I want to see two sad boy music producers fight. So like a Linium versus like... Seven Lions. Versus Porter Robinson. Porter Robinson. Millennium <laughs> <laughs> well, versus Porter would actually be That would sell solid. some tickets. It would. Well, <laughs> sure. I, I like to imagine Porter's uh, like promotion for his fight would just be so S-tier. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would, man. Oh, man. Who else would be good? Yeah, this is fun. I, I, fan, I fantasize about EDM fight night and being able to commentate. I've, I've had a few offers out to me a couple times on the idea one time i was going to be paired up against henry fong and i'm like dude i don't want to that's like suicide by henry i'm good like i'm not going to do that one and there was another one against uh pixel terror bentley and i'm like still i don't know i don't know if i want to fight yet because especially now i'm 34 i'm gonna be 35 this year and i'm, I'm about to have a wife i don't want to lose my teeth right now I'm I'm busy. Coward. I'm too yeah. You know what? <laughs> I'll take it. But I'll I'll fight. I'll fight when I need to. And if there is a fight night, depending on the rules, like if it's all no face shots, yeah, that's not totally out of the cards. Okay. Face shots though, it's like, man, I don't want to bite off a piece of my tongue. I'm I'm it's too late for that. Mouth guard, know, dude. Early twenties, dude, totally, whatever. Now, no. I I, I want to keep my 
I'm gonna keep this all where it is. Bro, you're getting swole, dog. You'll fucking roundhouse kick somebody. And... I I don't know my strength yet. Hey, I man. don't know it. I Amen. Hey, well, it's fun to talk about it regardless. It's probably yeah. not gonna happen, but it's still fun. One day. Yeah. Well, actually, I don't like the attitude that I just had. One day, because one day we're all gonna be in our late forties. 50s, 60s, and we're what like, are we dude, doing? we should beat the shit out of each exactly. other. Exactly. <laughs> Starting like an elderly EDM fight club would be so sick. <laughs> elderly. <laughs> elderly. I mean, in EDM, if you're 50, you're part of your elderly. A bunch of geriatric DJs just beating the shit out of each other. would be <laughs> awesome, man. Oh, dude, like when Stranger just killing everybody with his kung fu. <laughs> he does you, kung fu? You want to come against me? <laughs> Well, dude, we had a bunch of fucking fan questions, really great ones. Before we got into them, Kyle, do you have anything you wanted to ask Mr. Gasly? Yeah. Uh, safe to say you're pretty fond of animals, so oh, yeah. uh, my question would be, if you lived in a fantasy world, what animal would you try to tame and become friends with? What mythical creature Ooh, would dude. you try to mythical tame? Mythical creature? Yeah. Um, a chimera. Ah, nice. Can you pull up a chimera? I don't know what that is. Yeah. Do you? Uh, what about... What about your actually? Wh why a chimera? Um, the <laughs> so I don't know if I'm gonna do the exact quote, but um, sometimes I I tell Jessica, I tell her I want to fuck you until we become a chimera, an animal. <laughs> Please uh, keep no, going. It's a mythical beast <laughs> with uh, penis and vagina eternally fused, two sets of eyes that only stare at each other. And one voice that only whispers to itself. Oh damn! The, if, well, in the in the, uh, in the flavor of that, dude, I'm gonna be an octopus. You guys come hang out with me. You know what I mean? I'll have fucking a um, lot of pussies. A lot, a lot, lot of, of octopuses. I'll have a lot of pussies. <laughs> I'm trying to find a good uh, picture of one. Like, yeah, have, I don't. I'm not, old dragons. I don't even know what. I don't even know. Like we have like, uh, this one up here. That's that's oh. closer to it. That's actually closer to it. It's a three-headed beast. And then next, can you pull up an octopussy? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure that's a James Bond mission. Uh, dude. <laughs> yeah. What, the octopussy or that thing? It's a Octopussy. Movie. Yeah, octopussy is a villain? Or yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's the villain. Yeah, this is a fucking... Uh, that's damn. a chimera. But if if also, also, very fire would be a hydra. A hydra would be solid. Mm. But if we're talking fully mythical, then, I mean, having a Medusa, like a pet Medusa would be crazy. Yeah, I don't know if Don. I think dinosaurs might be fake, dude. So I'm going pterodactyl. T dinosaurs are <laughs> fake. Yeah. Yeah, fake news. We never. We didn't have dinosaurs. We never been to the moon. Um, you dude, know, dinosaurs have been to the moon. How you? How could we? <laughs> <laughs> how could we not have been? I know, dude. But I don't know. Why haven't we been back? You know, we what? we we did a whole podcast where we were looking up the things about this, and I was like, I don't know if I believe in the moon landing anymore. There's a lot. There's a lot of weird stuff. And there is. At the end of the day, I'm I just don't even. I'm more focused on like, I don't know. Good for you. Podcasting is a slippery slope. <laughs> you start being a normal human, and then you're like, I don't know if the world is flat. We, it might be flat. We we've gotten into some <laughs> interesting conversations on this podcast where I'm like, dude, I don't know anything anymore. That's real. I and I I like doing shit like that. Yeah, it's you fun. Actually, you start going down a rabbit hole, and you're like, wow, that was actually real. That kind of shit. Yeah. Dude, I uh, will say this. Speaking of space, they found. I saw this this morning. It was breaking news this morning. They found water on Mars. Legit. It, was that breaking? Yeah, it was breaking, bro. They found like, and it's a mile deep of water. It's not on the surface; it's below the ground. But they found they they found it. There's I believe in hollow Mars. Hollow Mars, dude. <laughs> yeah, hollow Earth, brother. I mean, like, you, what all the lizard people down there are going on? You know. So that is actually weird. The fact that there's uh, masses of land underneath. Earth's Earth's main crust, where there's like ecosystems and water and is there, dude? Yes. Factual. Fact check it. Actually, Sorry, I they, was looking up the Mars one. That's, that's something they actually did uh, discover not too long ago. There's like deep underneath the Earth's crust in certain areas, there's huge, vast ecosystems of with water flowing and and it's habitable potentially. So, I don't know. Yeah, a, an plus, immense plus reservoir. The, what's the deepest we've ever gone into the Earth? I think it's like 18 miles mm, is like fuck. the deepest. That's it. That that's as deep as we've ever gone into the Earth's crust. We have no idea how deep it goes, or can't. You know, just like the bottom of the ocean, there's just infinite mysteries. We're so limited 
and what we can learn about any of this. Dude, the Kraken might be real Godzilla. I mean, how wild would that be if Godzilla's out there? If Godzilla was actually out there, man, I would that'd be a dream come true so long as uh, you know, I wasn't in Japan at the time. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, he's always fucking up Japan. Dude. It's always Japan. It's always Japan. Dude, Godzilla minus one was fucking beautiful. It was. So it was beautiful. super solid. But and then I, I watched I'm Godzilla and Kong. The new trash, trash, so bad. trash. It costs fifteen million dollars to make Godzilla minus one, and it costs a collective of about five hundred million to make the three American Godzillas. Five hundred million, about about one hundred and sixty to one hundred and eighty, and then two hundred million for the most recent one. Like yeah. ridiculous. And they made an amazing movie with low, low budget, and there's something to be said about that. It's more idea and substance than it is Flash, you mm, know? Yeah. Way more about that. But, like, I would venture as far as to say that while my Godzilla Minus One was really good, Shin Godzilla was the best one that they've made. Because Minus One, he's an angry lizard, and he wants vengeance, right? Uh, but in, in Shin Godzilla... All Godzilla is is the result of a freak accident with nuclear waste. It doesn't even know what it is. It doesn't know what's going on. It's like freaking out, and it ends up on land where it normally would walk as a tiny little lizard, and now it's giant, and it's like, oh, God, what the fuck's going on? And you can tell it's scared, but it's still destroying the city, and it just keeps getting bigger and more fucked up and more mutated, and it's really, really gruesome the way they, they achieved its look and feel. Highly recommend. I'm going to have to watch it, dude. Shin Godzilla is better than Godzilla Minus One, in okay. my opinion. I'll watch Not it. Not story-wise, but strictly based on how they portray Godzilla. Okay. I'll have to check it out. Mm. Hell yeah. Well, Kyle, let's get to some of these fan questions, man. we got a lot of really good ones for you. I'm going to say a lot. I think we got like five. Yeah. What's good, boys? This is Dustin calling from Wisconsin. What up, Dustin? Your boy, Jesus Christ. And my question um, for the group is... Um, Ghastly, you are uh, pretty into putting on like renegade shows and small pop up shows for the community. You know, you're always meeting fans and stuff. Um, you know, just first off, obviously, we appreciate that for the culture. Um, but why, um, my question is, why are you, why do you push that so heavily? Why are you so interested in kind of giving back to the community and, and putting on uh, renegades and pop ups for the people? Um, I know I, we do uh, we do a lot of renegades ourselves. So, <laughs> want to let you know I appreciate it and why are you so passionate about it? And um, my last question is obviously you're pretty into Pokemon, but Pokemon versus Digimon. You can feel free to discuss um, your preferences. All That's right, fun. love you, boys, and oh. love from Wisconsin. Much love, much love. Back to Wisconsin as well. Yeah, uh, Jesus Christ, dude. AKA little trust fund. Shout hey. out, Dustin. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Honestly, so obviously Pokemon wins. It's just too it's too powerful. I disagree. They have, they have Mewtwo. I yeah, disagree, dude. Okay, all right. We're not going there yet. I w we can't, all right, we'll go. We'll go. But all right, actually, no, let's go ahead and go there. I already okay, know where fine. you're going, Mitch, and I'm on his side. Dude, dude, it's po Pokemon, Pokemon, and you're wrong. Pokemon's fucking gay, dude. Digimon right. rules. It's the digital world, dude. <laughs> what? What's more believable? What? Well, yeah. What's more believable? Yeah, dude. <laughs> Life forms? Or Life forms or us being a simulation and we get transported into a simulation. Life forms. Oh, fuck, dude. Where are the other life forms, dude? We might be in a simulation that, right I, now. I don't deny the possibility of that. I don't deny the possibility of it. But uh, we live in this one, and I can feel this table, and this table is telling me that Pokemon is way fucking cooler <laughs> than Digimon. <laughs> dude, here's the thing, dude. Digimon fucking rules, brother. <laughs> Digimon, I, I like Digimon more. Yeah, there's right, like, what, right. 30 Digimon, I think? Yeah. There's like over 1,000 we'd, Pokemon? We'd, yeah, because yeah, they have to keep on making exactly, new ones, dude, because exactly. they fucking suck, dude. They no. 30 rule. Dude. No. Now, if your argument was of Yu-Gi-Oh versus Pokemon, now it's harder. Now, now we have now we have some, you know, like the uh, the Dark Magician versus Mewtwo is actually that's a solid fight. That's a solid fight now. But if you're talking about like unnamed Digimon that no one can remember versus Pikachu, it's already over. It's over. Oh, man. Pikachu, I'm, Pikachu I'm is saying, love. He's just listen, gonna win. I'll give you this. Pokemon is more popular. <laughs> It is more popular. Sure. They have a lot more yeah. because they couldn't make a franchise with just a couple. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Sh shitting on them for being successful. I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They just had to keep making more. I'm just People loved it so much. I'm just Twitter right now, dude. Making fun of it because it's successful. <laughs> yeah, this shit sucks. Everyone likes it. <laughs> I always liked Digimon more. As a kid. Yeah. I don't know why. You're just niche. You're just niche. I guess so, dude. I'm, I'm just, you guys are fucking conformist, dude. Yeah. Well, 
Call it what you want it. It's more fun. <laughs> is it more fun? Pokemon as as a property is objectively more fun than Digimon. The most fun Digimon was was being able to connect your two little Digimon characters and like walk away from each other. And then you just press a button the whole time. There wasn't like a your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn. It was just beep, beep, beep. Oh, Pokemon's got the pass. better games. Yeah, for that's sure. what I'm saying. Think about it. I don't even listen, can I be honest with you? I'm just I'm here to talk shit. Likewise. Um <laughs> Can you pull up some Digimon? I don't even know any of the names. I just remember liking that it. That really a kid. blows a fat hole in your argument. Listen, I, <laughs> I will die on this hill, dude. <laughs> and they won't even be there for you. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I have to go into the computer. <laughs> <laughs> They're in the computer? Yeah. Uh, can you see the screen? Here. No, negative. Right, but, up. like, yeah, yeah. I mean, Digimon. I don't know why I enjoyed it so much as a kid. Maybe the show was better. The the, the games for Pokemon and the trading cards. Yeah, did, did, Digimon didn't have no fucking trading card games. No, no, they just had the uh, the Zoom in the a hardware. Bit. They had the hardware game, which I was really trippy at the time. But then once you could connect Game Boys, it was over. Yeah, I take it back, dude. Digimon's fucking gay, dude. Yeah, man. Pokemon you, rules. <laughs> look, look at what you have to choose from. They're they're kind of mid designs. And a lot of them just look like Pokemon. True. I mean, what came first? Pokemon. It did? Yeah. yeah Can we fact check back. this? Digimon came out in 1999. Pokemon came out in 1997. 1997? Uh, here in America. Yeah, as far as America. All right. What about the J-Pan, dude? Was it made in Japan? Yes. It, it probably came out in 95 in Japan if it made it to America by 97. Okay. Well, listen. Digimon... What's more realistic? We'll go there. 96. 96. Mm. Yeah. Pokemon started my photography career. I mean, it started his whole music career, yeah. so he's going to fucking <laughs> he's gonna stay on it, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's, Even though you didn't take it from that, it was just good, a no, fun no, joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Pokemon Snap. I played that game, and I was obsessed with cameras. Oh, dude, I remember when... Yeah, po- that shit was the shit, actually. That's Throwing good. the apple and trying to get Charizard to come out of the volcano was yep, epic. Yep, Wait, yep, was that yeah. with the one on Nintendo 64 with the microphone? Yeah, I don't know if there was a mic. I don't know if there's a mic. Uh, no, 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 there was the one on the <laughs> that Nintendo was, 64. That was Pikachu. Hey, you, Pikachu. Yeah, yeah I had that. that. Was, hey, you, actually, Pikachu. I have the 64 down here. But, nice. yeah, we fucking... Uh, I remember that game. Digimon, they never did no damn games. No, they had well. They had the hardware game. That was that, the one game. That's it. They had the show and the game and the hardware game, and we uh, like we fucked with it for a little bit. How old are you? If you don't mind me asking. I'm Twenty eight. Twenty eight. Okay, so when I was like fucking, uh, I'd say eleven or something around there, we had the Digimon game, and we'd plug it in to another Digimon game, and you'd walk away from each other, and then you'd like fight. It was cool for a little bit, but that was it. And then Pokemon had the fucking Game Boy where you could actually like trade like i you know trade a charizard for a mewtwo was like so fun yes what yeah, dork is making that trade but like did i remember my i'm b- making those trades today in pokemon go boy <laughs> absolutely you want the charizard i, I mean, want the mewtwo i know but like, who's who's giving up a charizard who's giving up their mewtwo for a charizard i'm giving up a charizard for a mewtwo i know but who's the dork making the fucking trade somebody who's Not got my 30 part. charizards that's right <laughs> okay but what i'm what i'm uh like my brother He's a bit older than me. They were like trading card, like posts, like stores mm. where like kids would go after school and they yeah. would have like tournaments and it's all Pokemon. Yeah. Did Digimon have cards? No. no? I okay. I th- I'm, I'm sure they tried it, but it, it clearly not Okay. Doesn't. You guys have, you uh, listen, dude, I'm man enough to admit when I'm wrong. I respect that. I mean, I'm, I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm but, wrong. But being right was never my goal. Just. Stand it was mine. Boys. Mitch has one on me, so this is my one on him, and I'm happy about What's it. What's my one on you? <laughs> Soccer versus volleyball. Oh yeah, dude. Fuck it. Yeah. He's which a, one? Which one were you saying was better, volleyball? Bro, Soccer. He's a dork. No, okay. Volleyball is way more fun to watch. And if you think it's soccer, you're he crazy. was also saying that volleyball people. Athletes were better athletes than soccer Bro, players because soccer players only run. Oh, we're gonna Bro, open this again. Listen. <laughs> I can be you drunk. Bo- that's the thing. You both have a valid argument. We don't, though. <laughs> they don't. How, how often do you go to the beach and play volleyball? I would say never. never. All right, never. How often do you go to the beach and play soccer? Never. never. Okay, well, what what is <laughs> what is set up for all fat, drunk people to play at the beach? Volleyball. Okay. There we go. 
<laughs> that's a weird. Wait, so I don't know if that's gonna hit basketball. I don't know if that argument hits. Basketball goals are set up all over the country. There's also there's also like and you know wait, wait, gyms oh, set up at don't the even, same beach. He just brought basketball <laughs> into this, dude. Basketball are the best fucking athletes. That's out my there. point. It's easier to play basketball. There's a basketball court he's a block saying, away. I guarantee. He's it's easy. So no, wait. So you're saying that just because there's a beach set up for volleyball that it's easier to play. I'm saying any one of us fucking idiots can get drunk and go play some volleyball. Basketball. And have any f- idiot can kick a ball, too. <laughs> yeah, Thank but you. we're going to suck at it, dude. <laughs> I'm just saying soccer, better athletes, harder sport. All right. Well, Bush, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bush is my forte. Sports aren't. Got you. Uh, but I will <laughs> say that um, I kind of agree with. Uh, the volleyball thing, because soccer has a lot of waiting in between. Thank waiting? What volley- you think? There's a lot of waiting. You're just waiting for something to happen. There would be a whole game, and there's one point. Well, it's because there's a lot of fucking freak athletes out there fucking getting at each I other. I totally get that. I totally get that. And I, get, I actually do get the appeal of soccer, but just based on your argument, I would say I also understand how volleyball is more entertaining because the same reason basketball is more entertaining to Americans especially it's because something's always happening There's basketball al- is the best something's always happening basketball is the best do you think volleyball players or soccer players have better athletes uh, uh the cardio thing is huge yeah cardio that's thing what is, got me that's what huge. got me to lose the, la- the argument last yeah, time <laughs> the cardio thing is very big being able to run literally miles and miles and miles for hours is huge yeah. so I would say soccer on that one for sure got you so uh Pokemon's better all right so, <laughs> the Renegades. Yeah. Oh, the reason I like doing Renegades is the same reason I've always liked being in my band and sleeping in a van and, you know, pulling up to a fucking parking lot and doing a metal show or someone's backyard or wherever. Like, you know, just being able to, like, there's such a blessing in being able to say, hey, everyone, I'm going to throw a random fucking party right here. And then people show up and then there's a completely new thing, new memory that everyone has just because that happened. And that's that's really it. It just comes from a, a place of like spontaneity, I guess. That would that would be the main main core of what it is because I think you have to be spontaneous to keep life entertaining and exciting. Like here we are, we're living in a van out here in Denver doing boots on the ground promo. Like that's fun. I don't fucking know what's going to happen. Yesterday we slept in a in a, a fucking parking lot because the place that we thought would have our reservation didn't and we had nowhere to go. So we just figured it out and like drove around. We went to like maybe like how many different places? Like four or five. We went to quite a few different places trying to find a place to sleep. It wasn't comfortable and it wasn't fun, but that's why it was fun. You know what I mean? I love just flipping the coin once in a while and just seeing what happens. Amen, brother. I dig yeah. it. Kyle, let's get to another one, brother. All right. That was fun with the Digimon Pokemon thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I did have fun with that. Oh. There we go. What up, Taboo? This is Aaron from Raleigh, North Carolina. What up, Aaron? I was wondering if you grew up watching Eastbound and Down or if you binge watched it on Paramount. And for Ghastly, I'd love to know your favorite Pokemon besides Ghastly and Gengar. Also, I was front and center at Elements this past weekend, and I believe you waved at me sarcastically, and I just wanted to say I love you for that. And much love <laughs> from Carolina. Also, fuck you, Taboo. Amen, dude. <laughs> Amen. Obviously, that first part of the question is fucking stupid. What does he think, dude? Did I watch that show? Of course I did. He's bounding down. Dude, rules. Mm. Rules. One of the <laughs> it's such a good show, dude. It's so fun. I'm not familiar with it. Oh my god. Do you like you like Danny McBride? He's red on Pineapple Express. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Peak, yeah, peak, yeah. peak yeah, Danny McBride. Solid. Amazing comedy show. One of the best comedy sh- shows ever made. Mm. Uh highly recommend. Copy that. But Just uh favorite down. Pokemon for you, brother. Uh Mewtwo because he philosophizes. He's the mm. only one that talks. Well, one of the only ones that talks. And he's just really cool for that. And he's also very OP. And, uh, yeah. and he's. It, but if I'm being honest, it's also because he kicks ass in Smash Bros. Mm. He's also kind of like Midwest emo, you know? You think so? Yeah, he's kind of yeah. Midwest emo. Give like, me, my, my dad, you guys created me in a lab. I have to go to my room. 
mean. Yeah, he's kind of like Homelander. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, now he's cool. <laughs> Midwest emo is cool, but Homelander's cooler. Damn it. Okay. It. Fair. I'm I'm just getting I'm just being wrong this entire second half of the pod. <laughs> Let's get to it, Kyle. All right. Guys, how we doing today? Hope we're all doing pretty well. Not really a question, but I got an interesting topic. Just found out that there are pay-to-play sets. I didn't even know that was a thing, even at larger music festivals. Um, just wondering if I could get your opinion on that. Uh, I can see pros and cons, especially for non-producers. Uh, but still, just wondering your uh, your opinion on that. Pay to the play. Great tunes, Gasly. Thanks for all the inspiration. Yeah, Hope buddy. You have a great day. Peace out. Hell yeah, man. He didn't say his name, but yeah, having yeah. to pay to play a set. I uh, I'm not familiar, but <laughs> I do believe that they exist. Oh, dude, I dig it. I mean, if I could get like the locals in you know Cincinnati to pay me a bunch of money to come play my show, let's go, boy. That's a different. <laughs> that's a different level, right? I'm joking. I'm joking. No, no, no. You're not. You're, every joke is half truth. It half would be truth. nice. More money's it would nice, be nice, but if I, the openers paid you. That would be nice, but you got to pay the openers. Right. Yeah, you should. You should, yeah. though. I, I mean, no, I, I, trust me. I get that. I, I, like, it, you should. I agree. I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying, like, that would be nice if, you know, they were paying me. <laughs> yeah, would, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm, absolutely. You get what I'm saying then. No, those pay-to-play things are real. I mean, I remember doing, like, some s- silly little paint parties in Mississippi when I first started DJing where it's, like, the guy throwing it. He gives you these tickets. I have to have this much amount of money in tickets in order for you to play this set that night. And if you didn't sell those tickets, then you, the money's coming out of your pocket so you can play. It's a, It was a thing. It still is a thing, I'm sure. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I've never had to pay to play, mainly because I was always broke. Um, But here I will say this. I will say I think it's unfortunate for if, if someone gets a, a spot, a billing in place of someone who's working their ass off and trying to make a dream come true versus someone who just happens to have the resource and is able to put themselves in that position. That's unfortunate. And I root for that person. Everyone roots for the underdog more, but if you have a resource in your life that can help you get where you want to go, I don't really blame you for using it. There's a lot of artists who come from money and there's, they make incredible music and we're glad that we have their catalogs. So if we were if it, if you were required to be poor and have to start from the bo- very bottom every single time, then that's one thing. But we don't live in that reality. So if you do have that kind of a resource, I don't think there's any shame in it. I, I know a couple of friends of mine who uh, they did come from money and they refuse to use what their family is willing to offer, and it holds them back. And and it is consistently, and it's like. Dude, if I was you, I would take a million dollars. You realize what that can do for a career in music? It's insane. And, but, you know, I'm sure uh, you can feel me on this. Like, I never had, like, you know, an extra mill just lying around with the fam, much less uh, any real investment at oh, all. Dude, if we had an extra 25 bucks, dude, it's Anything, fucking, yeah, it's literally. Friday. My biggest investment I, I, I got outside of my parents, you know, raising me and feeding me and making me alive uh, would be like when they were like, "All right, you're broke. Okay, we're gonna send you a thousand dollars." You know, and it was it was like one or two times I got a thousand dollars when I went broke in L.A. Um, but uh, that's that's enough to get you through a month, maybe two. If at that time, almost a month and a half. At that time, yeah. yeah. At that time, not now anymore. It's two weeks. So two weeks. Yeah. yeah. It's insane. Actually, it's what you just said. Dude, we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> One, we're gonna solve it right here. Shamefully, 131. <laughs> shamefully, <laughs> not just 131. Shamefully, <laughs> God. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, yeah. That's that would be my that would be my take on that. Honestly, like use your resources, but you know, if if you don't have that resource, then but it it should it should be strictly monitored. Like if you're getting a. Fucking! If you're opening for Porter at like a huge festival because you had the money, that's not happening. That's it. it isn't. Yeah. I'm. That, but I'm saying in that case, I'd be like, all right, that's that's wild. That's yeah. that's a huge, huge abuse of, and and just too greedy on the promoter's part. And fans can recognize that, so it, it wouldn't last long in that ma- in that way. Listen, dude. If those are things still, you should do it and then get on the stage and announce this is what you had to do. 
Yeah. I can just tell everybody what happened here. I mean, Solar Heavy has been fucking investing tons into his uh, Twitter campaign. Who knows how much money he's put into it? Has it helped him? I don't know. I mean, we're talking about him. Uh, you, you you don't get those ads on Twitter. We were talking about this with fucking uh, Boogie T and Coos. Yeah. And I hadn't I hadn't gotten any of them, dude. You haven't seen any of them. My algorithm's all sports and dogs and titties. Nice. <laughs> titties. Titties. <laughs> you gotta say it like that, dude. Titties. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Listen, if you got it like that, I mean. Make the best of it. Don't get up there and suck. If you're like, all right, I got to pay. Just be good, yeah. Yeah. Be good. If you're like, I got to pay to fucking do this right now, it's Mm. an investment. I mean, if you own a business, you're just making investments all the time. But you you should be getting paid to perform every single time. Absolutely. Paying to perform is kind of a self-admission, isn't it? I'm not quite there yet, but I've got the money. Yeah. I I, I hadn't had that when I first started DJing and wanting to play out. Like, the only thing we had were, like, these stupid paint parties in Jackson, Mississippi. What were they called? Oh, man. I think it might have been, like, paint party. Just paint party. Yeah, paint party. And, like, I had to do the ticket thing. And that because of that, I started throwing on shows. I was a promoter for many years. Not many, for a couple years. Yeah. And so I was booking on, like, other tours and stuff to come in where I was actually trying to build, like, a scene and not just make money off of locals and shit. Mm. But uh, because of that, so who knows? Do you think that that was beneficial for your career? Yeah. Boom. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not the paying to play, but me throwing on shows, yeah. Yeah. The paying to play, no. It was just more of like a, yo, this sucks. Yeah. Let me do my own thing. It's kind of like doing door-to-door salesmanship. It's like You ever did that? Oh, yeah. What'd you sell? I sold uh, fiber optic cable. It's a need, dude. I remember, <laughs> dude, I got I got so, oh, man, I was, I got so let down by the music industry at such a young age that I started selling knives for a couple of weeks. There you go. Started selling cut. That's Cutco. a good industry, though. Yeah, I didn't Oh, sell you were doing the door-to-door Cutco one. Cutco, yeah, yeah I, I didn't sell a one. single fucking knife. Even though I'm a great salesman, I'd kill it at that, like at selling like cars or something. But like, yeah. but, um. Oh, I, I feel you, bro. I used to sell cheese and like, I was that guy. Like people would be walking by me at the farmer's market. Pardon me, um, young lady. And obviously she's not that young, but she already have her attention. It's like, you seem like someone who enjoys a fine chef. Let me guess, you love goat cheese. And she'd be like, well, I I do love goat cheese. And like, boy, do I have a product for you. Why don't you try this? The, my mother and my father make it lovingly on their farm in Buckeye, Arizona. This is four ounces of goat chev. It goes for about $5, but I'm willing to sell it to you for four. Are you? Would you like to try a sample? Easy. Hell easy. yeah, that's and like, easy. Selling is fun. But the cuck- going to someone's house yeah. and knocking on their door fucking sucks. Dude. I got berated so many times, dude. No, fuck off. And yeah, <laughs> literally, get the fuck off my lawn. Yeah, you, like, come, you come, it was insane. I answer with a shotgun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> you answer their front door with a shotgun. <laughs> I was in Mississippi, dude. We all just had shotguns. If I was selling shotguns, I would have made a killing, dude. <laughs> like, like, I would have made a killing. Dude, what was funny with the cut cut thing is like, the whole thing is like, I can cut through a penny. And I'm like, look at this. Like fucking struggling, like <laughs> making sure I don't cut myself. Like, it's fine. It's fine. You don't have to do it. I'm like, believe no, no, no. I have to. <laughs> I have to do this. Then I got a call from a club, and they're like, we want to have you as our resident. And I was like, thank the Lord I can quit this job. Yeah. Anyway, next question, Cal. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. Hey, how's it going, boys? My name is Andre. I am based out of Denver, and I have a question uh, for Gasly. Brother, I have been a big fan of the music for a long time, but I'm also a huge fan of your older stuff with the Irish front. I've been boom, snap, clapping since I was a young, and I just wanted to know uh, if you possibly ever miss doing the whole metal scene, and if you ever plan on maybe going back, forming a new band, becoming a vocalist again awesome. um thanks for the time uh if you answer this thank you and uh have a bless one y'all much love well and thanks for listening to my music for so long that's really cool yeah andre um, who we do not know andre who we do not know <laughs> from denver what a guy um yeah the uh it's my roommate upstairs I've, is it <laughs> yeah i re- ran through the questions earlier and i ran upstairs like what a fucking hitter dude you got a, a heater of a question hell yeah yeah um but the uh, the boom snap clap and, and Irish front all that we kind of touched on it earlier. Like, yeah, I I do miss very much like the hecticism 
of being in a metal band and like what that entailed. Like people were violent, bro. We were so violent. Yeah. Like there, we used to play at this one venue a lot called Metal Devastation. It was Metal Devastation Two actually because it got so popular at the time. They had two locations, um, and the room is just this. It's it's this big black box with a giant pentagram on the front and a goat head. You go inside. It's the same exact vibe. And the floor is covered in blood. There's like posters of like upside down crosses being shoved into pussies. And it's like really brutal. And every night you could guarantee someone was going to lose a tooth, break a nose, have an arm broken, get their face smashed in. It was Sounds brutal. Sounds like a fucking void set, it huh? It was fucking... A, <laughs> I, I, I don't know if Danny's had anything like that in his set. Because uh, that's, that's, when it comes to EDM, there's still that Push pit. Yeah, There's pit. a yeehaw, we're having fun. And I've seen some get rough. I get in there. But nothing will ever come as close as, like, I've, I've seen some really messed up shit in metal pits. And, like, being yeah. in the metal band and, like, watch... And, like, you're encouraging violence. That, yes. And that's okay. Because that's what everyone was there for. I want to see somebody fucking Dude. die tonight. Yeah, literally. Right after prayer. Literally. We had su- we had we had we had, we had like southern we metal. had southern metal bands. Dude. I grew metal. up in the Bible Belt. We were in metal Christian metal bands. Yo, this set goes out to Jesus. Tell somebody. We would pray, be like, I want to see someone fucking die right now. Suck his fucking cock. <laughs> that didn't get said, but it would have been a lot cooler if it did. It would have been a lot cooler if it, if it did. Absolutely. I do miss that aspect because, but at the same time, I don't. There was, there was, there was one time, real quick story. So we had a song called Carnivorium. And at the time in Arizona and Phoenix, like the deathcore MySpace scene, there was a, a group called 24. I think that was their, they were like these straight edge guys for the hardcore scene. And they were at every single show. And when you're straight edge, like they're kind of straight edge, you're a vegan too. So like the leader of their of their like straight edge cult had XXX like straight edge on his arm and then vegan on this arm and he would beat the shit out of you if he saw you smoking a cigarette or drinking alcohol or eating or eating meat. He would just beat the shit out of you. Like really hectic. God, I'd like to fought him down and beat the shit out of him. Dude, hectic. what a dork. Yeah, total dork. And and we uh we made that song Carnivorium. And the whole premise of the song is uh, about eating uh, random animals like giraffe au flay. Oh, no, it was giraffe on the cob, elephant au flay, and like, you know, all kinds of different animals. Like a theoretical restaurant where you could eat any animal you want. That was the whole premise of the metal song. And when they found out about that, they came to our next Arizona show and we probably hit them with a whopping like, 102 people in the room. It's a big metal show, dude. It was pretty big. For a, like a local big. metal show, that's for a good metal show. a local metal show, yeah, that's pretty good. But we're playing, and these guys, like, they go into the middle of the pit, like the circle pit, and they just take chairs, set them down, and just sit, and just fucking mean mug us the whole set. And, like, any of our fans who, like, started to, like, slam dance, you know, slam dance. In the oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyone who went out there and did that, they would just, boom! Just fucking knock them out. Just knock out anyone who danced during our set. And so I'm looking over at Cameron and the rest of the band. I'm like, dude, are we going to fucking die tonight? Like, are these guys going to, like, I've seen these guys pummel people so many times. And so we're, we're like, taking down the, like, Irish front, we're going to kill you, motherfuckers. Like, yelling from us, yelling at us from the crowd. It was terrifying. Like, I was 16. Okay, these guys were, like, probably, like, 22, 23, something like that. Like, way beefier than me. And so we we tear down, and we ended up just fucking going out into the parking lot. We went out into the parking lot, and he's like, what the fuck is up with that song, Carnivorium? Talk about eating animals and shit. And and Cameron, uh, the other vocalist, he just pulled it out of his ass. He's like, dude, it's about cavemen. It's about cavemen. It's just like how cavemen had to, like, Damn, eat anything Cameron's they could. Coward, dude. dude. I honestly was not going to fight these guys. I've watched them beat people. They had baseball bats, bro. Yeah. I'm not going to get in that. 
You yeah. call me whatever you want. I'm not I'm calling not, you, I'm dude. Not, I'm not fighting people with baseball bats. I get it, dude. I'd I'm not doing like, it. I've been like, he ready, white boy? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You take you take your W, which is your face is right where you left it. Yeah. And, and I'll I'll go with that. The only time I'm going to get in a real fucking fight has to be something proper to fight for. Yeah. People you love. That's about it. Eating meat. Eating meat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> baiting meat. Eating meat. Eating meat and baiting meat. <laughs> yeah, fuck y'all, man. <laughs> oh, solid. Oh, man. All right, what's the next question? No, the strange guys, man. <laughs> Would you ever start another metal band, though? Would I? Uh, yeah, fuck yeah. I was actually thinking about doing something like that with Gengar. And just having like a live show and like have it be almost all death metal the whole time. That'd be cool, but that's a that's a future idea. I've got a lot more stuff to do first. I know uh, Hayden Kazo does a lot of fucking really dope shit with yeah. live bands. Yeah, stuff, he does man. a good one. He does yeah, a really good one. I haven't seen it yet, but I mean, I've seen videos. It looks fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. Just really trying to bring that rock world into it. Because a lot of people came from that world. A and, vast. And, yeah. A vast amount of bass music producers, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, I mean, me being one of them. Exactly. Well, let's get to this last one, Cal. Yep. Sorry. Howdy, howdy, Mr. T. I got to fix this delay. Is it a delay? <clears throat> yeah, give me one sec. All right. Howdy, howdy, Mr. Kabuti and Mr. Gasly. Hope you all are doing great today. Um, got a question for each of you. Uh, for Mr. Gasly, I know you've been super open and uh, just transparent about kind of your journey and setbacks and struggles and things like that. I was just wondering, um, you know, when you're experiencing self-doubt, what's what's the thing that got you through? Just wondering if you have any advice for the people out there that are struggling with uh, self-doubt that have, you know, been putting in the work, been on the grind, and either just plateauing or experiencing setbacks. Uh, what what got you through it? And for Mr. Tabuti, uh, you're going to be in Savannah playing Elon the day before my birthday, and I heard that you want to be playing some basketball with some of the local people. Hell yeah. So I'm going to hit you up, and I'd love to take you on. We could go teams. We could go one-on-one. -on -one. I'll dunk right in your face, boy. What's this guy's so name? I'll see you on October 8th in Savannah, Georgia. One on one, me and you, let's go. What's this? What is this? Fuck, what is this fucking name? Right there. Wait, 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 wait I want to see this dude. fucker's name. Yeah, I got it at the beginning right here. Oh. Gastly, hope y'all are doing bring it great back. today. Howdy, howdy, Mr. Kabuti yeah. and Mr. Gastly, hope y'all are doing great today. Um, got a question for each of so, you. So, pause. Yeah, he didn't, he even, didn't, he didn't even give his name because he's too fucking scared. He ain't dunking on shit. I'll put that D all up on your ass, boy. <laughs> fucking dunk on me, dude. You're going to fucking do nothing. You too scared to say Sounds your name. Sounds like a game. Sounds like a game, you brother. Won't. I will. I'll fuck him up. <laughs> you got I'll Tate last time he was here. I huh? fucked Tate up, dude. I'll fuck this guy up too, brother. Yeah? <laughs> I love me some B-ball. Play, right. I play all the time. I'll play one real quick. If we got time, what time is it right now, babe? Oh, we got time. We got time for a I game. I play about three, four times a week, dude. I ain't scared of nothing. You'll probably beat me. Probably There's watch. a high chance of that, but do you want to play chess after? <laughs> yeah, you'll fuck me up. I don't even know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know chess, dude. I don't know it. <laughs> I could just talk shit, but like, yeah, dude, you don't want this shit. <laughs> this guy could, it's probably like six five, can actually dunk. <laughs> yeah, no shit. All right, yeah, that'd so be fun. super funny. That's so funny. All right, what was his actual question? I just got pumped about the. Dunk oh no, it's it was uh something about self doubt. What was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah the it, self doubt thing. You like, want me to run it through the? Here. Oh no, no, I remember. Yeah, okay, it's uh, it's uh, what do I do when I'm experiencing self doubt? I don't know. I mean. More than anything, I suffer through it, and then you just kind of deal with it, and you're like, fuck, this really sucks. And then you remember, like, oh, I got this far. Like, there was there was a time where you wished you had what you have now, so who's to say it's not possible to get more of what you want in the future? And so you just shut up and just work. You know, literally stop telling people what you're doing. That's huge. That's actually big. Like, stop telling everyone, oh, I'm going to – do this and I just wait big news coming guess what nobody fucking cares if you really want to make an impact on your career Agreed. just fucking do it show us don't tell us show Agreed. us and that's that's a big one um and just get inspired. I don't know. Take six hits of acid and just try to hack Ableton. <laughs> and I guarantee you, start with a virtual ride tutorial. Just make sure you have Battery Ford downloaded first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
they <laughs> life swinging hard, but I'm swinging harder, brother. Exactly. Fucking just keep on pushing on, brother. Amen, amen. You, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. Literally, you just keep fucking going, and it, that's why I like. Uh, that's why I fucking like anime so much because that seems to be so much of the main overarching message in so many animes is just fucking keep going, and it's like. You're not guaranteed that you'll get whatever you want in the future, but you're guaranteed you won't if you stop trying. And so I fucking love that one, and I live by that one. So just keep trying. Just, you know, even if you, even at your own miserable uh, experience of having to open Ableton again, even though you're not inspired, just fucking do it. Just fucking do it. The same reason you don't have to get up and shit on the toilet, but you know life will be better if you don't shit your pants. Just get up and do it. Hey, dude, listen, you can do anything you want in this life. Just don't be a little fucking bitch. That's facts. That's yeah. actually the fact. Yeah. So just keep on, keep on, keeping on, brother. Amen. Well, look, dude, we made it to the end, man. Fucking thank you for being on here today. Course, this was brother. so much thank fun. You for having me. It was this a was a lot time. of fun, it's man. An excellent time. Uh, you know, you know, I've been talking about this for a while. I'm just fucking so glad you hit yeah. me up, brother. Fucking this was great. It was synchronicity, bro. I'm glad to be here. I finally got to have a bush. On, on your podcast, stuck. So. Well, when I take you out to the fucking court, dude, we can go behind it and I'll show you another bush. All but, right, let's uh, see it. Fucking <laughs> man, like I said, thank you so much for being here, man. I've been such a massive fan for such a long time. Much you love, know, man. Much I remember love. when I first started DJing, you know, just having some ghastly songs in there, like just or my buddy's like, "Have you heard this shit?" I'm like, "What the fuck is this?" Hell you know, yeah. just back in the day, man. So. Fucking been a fan for a long time. It's been really cool to sit down and talk with you, man. And, you as well, brother. Loving all the stuff you're doing and just keep on going, brother. Anything you want to let the people know before you get out of here? Um, well, when when are we going to be airing this, do you think? Um, two, two or three weeks. Yeah. Cool. So, no. I love Denver. <laughs> I, I'm excited that I got to come out here and play. By the time people hear this, I'll have already played the show. And uh, I'm just stoked that, you know, me and my future wife are living in a van right now. And uh, with our little shaved dog, and we're having a good time. Hell and, yeah. Uh, life's good, and I'm really grateful that you brought me on today. Had a hoot and a holler, I would say. Hey, Amen. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, big up, my brother. Hell yeah, brother. Hell well, yeah. appreciate you again, man. Kyle, appreciate you. Thank you, buddy. And I appreciate everybody yeah, listening to this week's Kyle. episode of yeah, Talks yeah. with Taboo. See y'all next week. Peace. See ya.